Hello, everyone, and welcome to the magical world that is Adobe Lightroom CC. I am so excited to bring this course that will teach you all the amazing image editing and organization tools that Lightroom has to offer. We will start with the basics and move on up to the more advanced creative stuff as we progress throughout the class. So what will we cover exactly? First, we provide a little tour of the workspace so you can expertly navigate your way around the program. We then do a nice deep dive into Lightroom CC's incredible organizing tools, including creating shared albums, their starring system, creating and applying keywords, filter searching, and more. And then if that were not enough, we get into the fun stuff of editing, enhancing, and touching up your photos, which will include options for affecting lighting and color correction, as well as the powerful touch-up features that Lightroom CC has to offer. We will also explore the sharing and exporting options, including creating your very own personal web gallery to showcase your photos. Now, this course is designed to be an interactive hands-on course, so occasionally you'll hear me say, pause the video and practice on your own. So make sure you download the class files from the link below to do so. This will ensure you get the most out of the course and learn the program in a more experiential, hands-on manner. I'm looking forward to teaching you all the cool things that Lightroom CC has to offer, so stay tuned and get ready to learn. Let's begin by defining what Lightroom CC is. Now, you may have already known about Lightroom, the desktop native program, which is now known as Lightroom Classic. Lightroom CC, which came out officially in 2017, is the cloud-based or cloud-native version of Lightroom Classic, which means that all of your images, albums, and edits are all available across platforms, including the desktop version, which is what you see here and what we're gonna focus on in this course, the web version, and all mobile devices, including iOS and Android. So when you make any changes here in the desktop version, it automatically syncs up with your other devices, ensuring you have a backup, can collaborate, and share your photos easily. It also differs from the classic version in its more simple interface. You get a lot more of the same features, including the ability to create albums, organized by stars and flags, and of course, all the amazing lighting, color, and sharpening tools. But again, it is designed to be a little more simple and a little more straightforward than the classic version. Now that we know a little bit more about the background of Lightroom CC, let's take a tour of the interface. Now, before we start making any edits or organizing our photos, let's start by understanding the interface and what I like to call the culture of the program so we can understand where things live and how to really interface with the workspace. So if you look on the left-hand side, you're gonna see we have this nice left side pane, which allows us to have access to the ability to add on photos, how we can look at all of our photos. This is gonna be a place you're gonna be coming to a lot. It tells us how many photos we currently have inside of our entire photo catalog. And also we can filter it out by other things like date and then people, we'll be exploring that in a little bit, which photos that we've deleted. You'll also see that here's the albums that we've created. And as you create more and more, this will start to grow. I have one album in here called Colorado. And then you'll also see there's another tab here called Shared, which is gonna give me the ability to see which photos I've actually shared with people, which albums I've shared with people. You'll notice some other little icons here, like a little plus sign if I wanna add some other things on there. You'll notice little drop down menus to see more details there. Here's another plus sign in case I wanted to add on new albums. So you can see that some of this interface is very universal in terms of its symbology. Okay? You'll also notice that up on the top here, I have the ability to collapse and expand this little side pane. So if you don't really wanna see it all the time, you can very easily collapse and expand that. And also notice that when I move my mouse over it, it gives me a keyboard shortcut of P. So you'll notice that's gonna be another nice little kind of cultural nuance of Lightroom is that there's a lot of keyboard shortcuts to do a lot of different things. So you don't have to come back to your mouse. So again, if I just tap on the P key and you can see it can collapse and expand out what we see here on the side pane. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at some other parts of the interface. So if we look down on the bottom, let's kind of look way down here to these little icons down below. I'm just gonna move my mouse over, you can see. Currently, I'm inside of the photo grid view, right? And then notice there's that G, right? That's gonna be a keyboard shortcut. 
To the right of that, you can see I can go to the square grid. Okay, so what's the difference here? You'll notice here I can just see the photos, or I'll just separate it out by these little column lines. Whereas when we go over to here to the square grid, you'll notice how if when I mouse over it, it's gonna give me the option to flag and unflag something, give me the option to star them, right? Which is gonna be really helpful for when you're trying to filter by photos you like and you don't like. Also notice there's the ability to then select your individual photos as well. Okay, now I'm just gonna go ahead and jump way over here to the right-hand side where we have our little grid size, a little zoom ruler. I can go ahead and just click and drag on that and you'll see I can also make them a little bit bigger. Now I'm gonna use the keyboard shortcut of G like I showed you before to toggle back and forth between both my photo grid and the square grid. You can see how easy that is. Okay, so I'm gonna come back to this. And now you'll notice I can now click on any one of these photos very easily. And if I wanna edit this or view it a little bit bigger, I can either just simply double click on the photo or I can come down to here, choose detail, or guess what, just tap on the D key, right? So if I double click, you can see, bam, there I am. Now I'm currently inside of this photo and you'll see that I'm gonna get a number of different options here down below. Now, if you click on this, you're gonna see, I can now make this five stars. Okay, and that's gonna be very helpful for when I edit it later on and when I'm looking for filters, okay? You'll also notice over here on the right-hand side is my different fitting options. So if in case I wanna zoom this in a little bit more, I can do that, okay? So notice I can click on this little drop-down menu and I can zoom into 400%. Well, I really wanna get that granular detail to really focus on something. Maybe I wanna change the color of that particular thing, right? Bring it out a little bit more, sharpen another part of it there. I'll be able to zoom in. Now, if I just simply click on it once, that takes me right back to the best view. If I click on it again, notice it remembers the last zoom that I was currently in. Click on it one more time, and then bam, there I am. If I click back on this, it's gonna take this back to 100, and then that reverts how I'm gonna be clicking and then clicking away again, once again. So just know that when you click on it, it allows you to zoom in, but it remembers the last zoom level that you manually chose. Let's come back now to our grid mode. So I come back over to here. And again, I want you to notice that I can zoom in just like that. And then I'm just going to hit the D key to come back over to here. And again, notice how this changes, all right? Now, if you look over here on the right-hand side, in addition to all these, you're gonna see that I have this option to show the film strip or not show the film strip. For some of you by default, this little uh, film strip down below will be showing. If you don't want it showing, you can simply click on it or notice the keyboard shortcut is just the forward slash. So I'll show you both ways. You click on this or I can just go ahead and hit the forward slash, which is the same key as the question mark key on your keyboard. So very easily, if you want a little more room on your keyboard, you can very easily do that. Now to the right of this, you're gonna see is the option to show the original. So if you've made some changes to this and you wanna kinda of do a compare and contrast, this show original will really help. Okay, I haven't really made a lot of changes here, okay? But once we start doing some editing and modification, you'll see this is gonna be a really, really nice feature. And again, look at the keyboard shortcut. It's not a forward slash, it's a backslash, okay? And that's gonna be right underneath your backspace key or right to the right of your bracket keys, okay? so. Very good. Now I can come back to my grid and I can see all my options right there. Okay, now let's take a look at some of our editing tools and some of our different photo modification options over here on the right hand side. So this is gonna be the meat of where many of you are gonna be spending a lot of your time to really improve all of your photos. Now, if you move your mouse over these, you'll see, it's gonna tell you what they all do. Okay, this is my editing options, crop and rotate, healing brush, the brush tool, linear gradient, and radial gradient, okay? These bottom three are gonna be a little more advanced for this stage, but we are gonna get into those as the uh, lesson progresses. So I'm just gonna talk about what these are first, just our editing options, so you can see how this interface works and what these options work for us. First thing I want you to notice is not only can I click on this, but there's some great keyboard shortcuts like the E keyboard shortcut for editing. You can see there is C for crop and rotate, and then there is H for the healing brush. So if I just tap on the letter E, notice how that pops up, giving me the ability to now edit this particular photo. Pretty cool. 
Now the editing function gives you a lot, a lot, a lot of different functionality here. Okay, so edit is broken down by light, color, effects, details, optics, etc. You'll also notice that on top of this is the ability to change the profile, which we'll be exploring later on. Notice how there's also presets right here. You also want to take a look at some of these other little subtle whispers here like, oh, I want to do like an auto fix on this. Take a look at all those as well. Now, if we go a little bit deeper into these, if I click on this little drop down, notice how there's going to be a number of different color options for me in terms of different profiles. And by the way, you may get different set of options depending if you're working on a JPEG or a raw file. Now, if I click on light, you'll see, oh my God, wow, lots and lots of options here. Hiding inside of this little light drop down is all kinds of different things here. Now, the interface to work with this is very simply just by clicking and dragging on the little slide rule. Very neat. If I don't want this anymore, the easiest thing to do is to go back to zero is just simply double click and it takes you right back there. Okay, so again, click and drag over there, double click, it takes you right back. Okay, very neat. We're gonna be exploring these in a little more detail here. So let me go ahead and collapse this. And then I click on this and you can see, oh great, color has slightly different options, but a lot of the very similar types of functionality and interface to just go ahead and click and drag on these. Okay, and again, we're gonna be getting into more detail as we move throughout the course. Click on this, you can see, very nice, awesome. Okay, now there are some other hidden features here that I want you to focus on. Like for example, let's just go ahead and just add on some more clarity here, okay? If I right click on the word effect right there, you can see I can very easily reset my effects. See that, I'll do that one more time. I'll go ahead and do this. Okay, I'll do that. And again, right click, reset effects, and all three of them go back to zero. Okay, so nice little hidden feature there. Just again, right click on the name of the section right there, and then reset. Now you'll also notice that I can expand or collapse these in terms of the size of the viewing pane here. So I can go ahead and right click and say normal, depending on your, you know, visual aesthetics and in terms of your preferences and maybe even your screen size, you can very easily work with these. Okay, so we're gonna be getting into more and more detail on these, but just for right now, just pay attention to how this interface works. Okay, now if we go over here to crop, you're gonna see again, very similar. We're gonna go over to here to our healing brush, very similar, okay? And then like I said earlier, we're gonna be going a little more detail on the brush and the gradients um, as we go a little more advanced. So hang tight on that, okay? Now, what I wanna focus also here is the ability to work with these little guys over here on the lower right, okay? So you might have some activity because you're collaborating with people. When you click on that, that's gonna allow when you uh, share, you're gonna have some people commenting. You might wanna see what those things are. We'll see kind of what your messages are, et cetera, when you are sharing. If you look over here, you'll see right below that, it's this little price tag that allows you to create keywords. So that's gonna allow you to be a little more organized with your content. You can say, hey, this is Italy. Okay, these are, this is about oceans. Okay, this is about nature. This is about my friend Bob's family or something like that. Okay, so you can create keywords. And of course, we're gonna do a lesson on that in a little bit. But what's so nice about Lightroom is that it also uses what we call machine learning, where it's actually looking at all of these things here. And if I just type out ocean inside when I'm searching up on top, you're gonna see it's gonna find this. If I type out nature, it might pop up here. If I type out the color red, it may pop up here, okay? And of course, you'll wanna test these things out to make sure it's doing what you want it to do, how you want it to do it, okay? But it is the type of thing that you'll be very surprised that the machine learning is pretty accurate and pretty thorough. Okay, now if we take a look down below our little keyword icon, you're gonna see here is this little I for information, and this is gonna give us a ton of information on this particular photo. And you can see it's showing me here, okay, that what kind of camera was used to take this picture, right? You can see the size of it, okay? You can see the file format. Is it a JPEG? Is it a RAW file? You can also see some of the other camera settings in terms of the ISO speed, the focal length, the f-stop, the shutter speed. You can also add in your own metadata if you want to, right? So you can just see here, you can add in your title, caption, copyright, anything else you wanna to add to it, okay? And also, when was this photo taken, put in a city, all this good stuff here to make it a little more searchable, a little more engaging 
when the metadata becomes relevant. Okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead and click on that again. And you'll notice there is the I for info to access that shortcut if you want to, to access those options. Okay, and then finally, let's just talk about this little top area on top here. So you're gonna see here is the option for searching and there's also a little filter icon right there. And that is going to allow you to search for things, right? Very, very easily. So we're gonna get into more detail on that. But if you wanted to search by people, if you wanted to search by some of those machine learning topics or even some of your own keywords, you'd go ahead and do it up here. And then my little filter option is gonna allow me to do all kinds of different additional things like search by the different stars and whether I flag them or not and some different camera settings right inside of here. So there's really a lot more than meets the eye. So of course we'll want to explore that on our own and wait for it when we get into that lesson. Okay, now if we look over here on the far right, we have a number of different options, including our undo option, some of our notifications, our ability to share, okay, and then also a nice little help menu in case you get stuck, okay, and then also you just want to make sure that is this photo actually synced up? So you might get an error message for some reason telling me, hey, you know what? This photo has not been synced up. Maybe you're not online or there's something wrong with your account. This will give you that information right here, okay? Now, the last part here, and you don't need this quite as much, but some of you may be used to that, is gonna be all these options right up on top here. And finally, let's just talk about our little file menu up on top here. A lot of these things are gonna be redundant compared to what we've already discussed, but some of you might like to interface with this type of file menu here. So if you look, click on the file, you'll see lots of good options right here, file, and then add photos, pretty cool. If you wanna search your photos, notice there's also the keyboard shortcut. Now also notice that you can export right from here as well. Okay, so keep that in mind, we're not gonna see an option for export down below. So you might wanna take this photo and then you're going to take it and bring it into a website, into a newsletter, into PowerPoint, something like that, you'll have the ability to do that. Notice you can also migrate from another Lightroom catalog, right? If you are working Lightroom Classic, you can bring that in right from here. And then just explore some of these other options, right? Again, some of these are going to be a redundant like our undo, okay? We're gonna talk about copying and all that stuff later on. You can see here is photo, you can go ahead and set all your stars, you can go ahead and do some nice little rotating, all these great options here that you may not see otherwise or it might not be as obvious to you. And then again, here is view, and then a lot of our keyboard shortcuts that we explored earlier, you can see, in case you want a reminder of what they all are, you can go right to view, and then bam, there's a nice little cheat sheet for you. Okay, so great. Now we have this as a nice foundation to get us going so we can do some organization and we can do some editing, modification, and enhancement on our photos. So pause the video, Right, and then go ahead and just explore the interface as much as possible. In the next video, we're gonna show you how you can actually bring in the photos. Then you'll be able to practice this a little bit more once you actually have some photos in there. Okay, so we'll see you in the next lesson. Now, currently I have a number of photos in here. Some of you who are watching this, maybe you've got no photos in there. So let's fix that problem. How do we add in photos? So if you look over here in the upper left, you're gonna see here's the option to add photos. Very simply, if I click on add photos right there, you're gonna see I have the option to browse for photos inside of my desktop. You'll also notice that I have the option to then go to an external flash drive if I want to. So let's take a look at both options. We'll see how easy that is. And also notice the keyboard shortcut of Control Shift I. If you're on a Mac, it's gonna be Command Shift I. So I click on that. It's gonna take me into my photos section here. Let's just say I wanna bring in some extra photos. So let me go ahead and bring in some of my Italy photos here. And I'm just gonna go ahead and just select all these. I'm holding down the Shift key. Click on those, okay, great. And then you'll notice here is the review for import. It's gonna come in, very nice, okay, excellent. Love these, looks great. And you'll see over here in the upper right, it says, hey, add on these 63 photos, fantastic. Now, if I already had the photos inside of my library, they'd be grayed out right here. So they wouldn't, they'd just be like, yeah, these are already here, so you don't need to focus on these. But if there's certain ones that I don't want, I can very easily just uncheck these, right? So, okay, not taking that one in, not taking that one in. Okay, great, none of these, okay, great. No problem at all. Now I'm pretty much ready to go, 
but I want you to notice that it is going to give me the option to add to an album, right? We're going to talk about albums in a little bit, but just notice I only have one album, which I discussed in the last video, that was Colorado. So it's going to allow me to then add this to Colorado if I want to, or I can very easily create a new one right here on the fly if I want to as well. But for right now, we're just going to say add 57 photos over here in the upper right. Click on that. And now my photos are coming in, beautiful, one by one, lovely, excellent. Now you'll notice that on the left-hand side, I can have a section viewable that says recently added. Cool, and there they are, my 57 photos. Let me go ahead and zoom in on that a little bit. So you can see there are those 57. Lovely, fantastic, very happy about that. Okay, now I also mentioned that I can bring in photos from the outside, right, from my external photos, my external uh, flash drive. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on add photos, and then there it is in my D drive is my Samsung USB. And you'll see that it comes in a little bit kind of funky in this way. So I find that the best way to kind of override this, if you see it, is to simply go and click on the actual drive name up on top in the upper left. And I click on that and that's gonna allow me to go directly into it and then go to the folder that I want. Okay, so bam, there I am, my Italy food picks. I'm just gonna go ahead and marquee over all of these and just say review for import. And then these are gonna come in looking at these delicious, delicious treats from Italy. And then bam, there it is, same exact options. You can say add photos, okay, very cool. But this time, let me go ahead and just create a new album based off of these. So I'm gonna say new, I'm gonna say Italy food picks. Click on create, and then just say add photos like I did before. And not only were my photos brought in, but guess what? Now I have a new album called Italy food picks right underneath Colorado. Okay, so very cool, very easily to bring all these in. So now let me go back to all my photos so I can see them. Now you'll notice that I have 91 photos total. Okay, so if you're paying attention, it's significantly more than what I have when we first started. So we're gonna click on all photos, you'll see, bam, here they are, all my photos, including all my beautiful Italy photos, my food pick photos, et cetera. Okay, now, when we discussed the interface, we were looking at the ability to sort by different functionalities, right? By different filters, right? Just by different parameters. So if I click on, let's just say import date, I click on that and that's gonna now get reversed. I'll be able to see, ah, okay. I'm really wanting to see more about like, hey, when did I bring all of these in? Not necessarily when they were taken, so I can very easily sort it accordingly. Okay, so kind of nice. All right, so that's bring in photos. So you wanna pause the video, practice that. You of course can use the photos that I provided for this class. You can certainly bring in your own photos, but have something to practice with. And now that you have something to practice with, I want you to go back to the last video and explore the interface, right? Just really understanding the culture of things. You can certainly experiment if you want to. We learned about how to reset. We learned about how to undo. So certainly don't be afraid to experiment a little bit. But at this point, I really just want you to you know, understand the interface and the kind of culture of the program, the workspace, where we can find things, and a little bit of the functionality at this point. Okay, so go ahead and pause the video, and we'll see you in the next lesson. Now that we have all of our photos imported, let's go ahead and take a look how we can get a little more organized with these images. Now, Lightroom allows you to get organized in a number of different ways. And for this video, we're just gonna focus on how we can do it through albums. So if you look over here on the left-hand side, I have this section here called albums, and I have two albums that I've created. One was this Colorado album, which I created before this class, just so you can see what one looks like. And you can see I also have my Italy Food Picks album, which I created on the fly as I was doing my import from my external flash drive. But now let's say I want to create an album based off of the photos that I have inside of my photo library here. How would I do that? You're gonna see that there's this nice little interface right here, click on little plus sign and then create albums. You'll also notice I can also create folders, which we're gonna be doing in just a second. But now the easiest way, and I'd say the more, most effective way for me in this case, is I wanna have all of my photos sorted in such a way, so it's gonna be very easy for me to find these Italy pictures. 
So these Italy photos were all taken at a certain time. So the sort that I currently have is actually sorting them by, guess what? If I click here, you're gonna see they're all sorted by my import date. I would prefer to have them as my capture date. So then therefore I can all see them, all my Italy pictures all coming together as one, as opposed to some of these other ones that were maybe captured at a later time. Like all these things are much, much later. You can see, great, now here's all my Italy pictures. So I'm going to make an album based off of these. So I'm just gonna simply just click on the first one, scroll down all the way to the end, and I'm gonna hold down my shift key once I get to the last one. And you can see they've all been selected. Very good, and you can see over here in the upper right, it tells me that I have 73 of 91 pictures selected. That's pretty great. And now finally, I'm gonna go over here to my little plus sign. I'm gonna say, create album. I click on that, and it says, hey, well, what do you wanna call this? I'm gonna say, Italy all. Okay, that's great. You can include the 73 selected items. Yes, sir, I certainly do. I click on create. And you can see just like that, it's now been created, okay? So just understand that these photos have not been exported out. We now actually have kind of a, a ghost, like a shadow, if you will, of the original photos that are actually in here. Because notice this number of 91 still remains the same. And you can see here is 73. So whatever I do inside of this little album will also affect my originals and vice versa. So they're basically kind of like a mirror image of each other. Okay, but now if I delete something from an album, it does not necessarily get deleted from all photos. But if I delete it from all photos, it will get deleted from the album. So think about the all photos as like my mold. Okay, so you can see I can very easily toggle these around here. Okay, so if I go over to here and I just go in and double click on that, I can very easily interface with this and do all kinds of editing, et cetera, and go right to it. Okay, so let me come right back to all my photos here. Okay, and I'm just gonna go ahead and click back on my grid. Fantastic, there we are. Now, albums are just one way for me to get organized. Let's talk about how we can work with folders. Okay, folders work potentially in the way that you think they do. It's just gonna allow you to kind of organize things at kind of a top level sort of hierarchy. So I want to have a folder called Italy. Maybe I wanna have a folder called Nature. Maybe I want a folder called Food, right? So let's just see how that's gonna look. So I click on my little plus sign here. This time I'm gonna say create folder. I'm just gonna say Italy. Click on create. And now you can see, bam, Italy now exists, but I want this to go inside of Italy and I want this to go inside of Italy. Okay, and now when I click on this little fly out, you can see these now belong inside of Italy. Okay, let's go ahead and choose another one here. Let's just say create folder and we'll say USA. USA, and now let's bring this down. And bam, there it is. Colorado will now live inside of that. So it's gonna take a little bit of kind of dragging. And now you can see I'm nicely organized with all my content. Now, if you wanted to rename any of your albums or share them, it's as easy as a right click away. So if you just simply right click on any album, you'll see here's the option to share. Very good, share and invite. You can rename, you can also delete your albums. And also just note there's a few other maybe advanced options for if you wanna store your album locally, meaning that's gonna be on your computer, okay, as well as on the cloud. So making sure that this album is not just gonna be up in the cloud, it's gonna be available right here on your computer. Now that said, bringing in the cloud into the discussion, just keep in mind once again that everything we do here is gonna be available on all of our devices, our mobile devices, on the web, okay? And then once you log into Creative Cloud, even on another computer, you will see that all these albums will be here for you, okay? So just keep that in mind. And also note that if you look over here, let me just zoom in a little bit, this little guy right there, you click on that, that's gonna give you some options to sort by whatever you wanna sort by, okay? By title, recently updated, your photo count, okay, your view options, okay, names and covers, or just names only. Notice how that's gonna make this have a little bit of a different view. Click back on that, bring back the covers. Totally up to you, maybe depending on your screen size, how you like to work together, okay? All right, so go ahead and pause the video, practice that. You see how nice and easy it is, and also how effective it is for your organizational purposes. Okay, and then we come back, we'll do a little bit more organization 
on all your photos. But go ahead and pause the video, practice this, see how easy it is, and again, see how helpful this is gonna be for you to be able to stay organized with your content. Let's just do a quick video on how we can view our options based off of the date that the photos were taken. Earlier, we discussed how we can sort things out by this guy down here, and you can see here's my capture date and a few other options here in terms of my modified date, et cetera. Now, if you look over here on the left-hand side, you're gonna see I have all these options for recently added, but then I also have this little guy kind of hiding in plain sight, which is gonna say by date. Now, if I click on that, you'll notice it's gonna expand out, and you're gonna see I have a whole bunch of years and also a little arrow to expand that out even further. So if I click on that, it's gonna allow me to see, oh, okay, wow, I took a lot of photos in September of 2018. Okay, what about this 2014? Oh, wow, look at that, I got one photo in May, one photo in October. Oh, pretty cool. So if I go ahead and just take a look at this May photo, I click on that, ah, okay, cool. Now I can see filtering it out based off of that one particular time period. Okay, so very cool if you wanted to see your photos in that view. Okay, so excellent, you can do that. Now you'll also see how you can do it by your recently added. So you can see, okay, when did I do this? Oh wait, when was that? Oh, that was Wednesday, okay, very cool. What about this one? Okay, all right, good. Now I remember we're adding those in. So it's really nice that it gives you the opportunity to basically think for you, it's like, well, when did I actually save these? When did I import them? Okay, very good. When did I take them? You can be very specific about it as opposed to here where it's just gonna sort it all out. If you've got thousands and thousands of photos, this can be a really, really kind of like insurmountable sort of mammoth task to be able to then just go right to here where you could just go right to each individual years and each individual months to then, bam, see exactly what you want to see. Okay, so just wanted to throw that out there, practice that, and again, we'll see you in the next lesson. Another great organization tool is going to be around starring and flagging our photos. Why might we want to do that? We might want to star our photos, say, hey, listen, this is a really great photo, this is a not so great photo, forget all about it, okay? Our flagging is basically going to be like yes or no. Where the stars, you can go from zero to five stars, whereas the flag is just going to be yes or no, essentially. Okay, so how do we do that? Number of different ways. So if we look down below, you're going to see we have these little star options down over here on the left-hand side, and then to the right of that, we've got these two little flag options. So if I now just simply click on this, I'm like, oh, that's a pretty neat one. Do I love it? I'm not sure. Let me give that four stars. I come over to here, and now that's four stars. Okay, let's go over to here. Well, it's good, it's not great, but you know, there's a lot of potential there. So I'll give it that four stars as well. And maybe I'm gonna come back to that one, use that as an editing option. Okay, pretty cool. Now, that's gonna take a lot of time to go through one by one and then come down here and click on it, click on it. There's a really nice, even maybe better way of working with these. So let me just go ahead and go to like my, my food picks. Like I click on that one right there. And instead of coming down to my stars, I'm literally just going to type on the number that I think that is the star itself, okay? So I love both of these. So I'm just gonna go ahead and just, just choose on my keyboard the number five. And you'll notice down on the bottom it says five stars. This one's also gonna be five stars. Awesome, fantastic. Let me go ahead and now do these two at the same time. So I'm gonna click on it and then hold down my control key or command key if you're on the Mac, and I'm gonna make both of these five stars. And look at that, both of them are five. So when I click on it, I'll see five, click on this one separately, it's also five. So you can do multiple at the same time. So let me just go ahead and make all of these five stars. I'm gonna click on this one and then go way down to here, beautiful Cinque Terre and the Amalfi Coast, I believe. Uh, so I'm just gonna go ahead and highlight these and then make that five. Okay, excellent, love that. Now. Earlier, we talked about the different grid systems, right? The different grid views. So what I'm gonna do now is change my grid view by just tapping on the letter G, but alternatively, you can come over to here if you want to, go to my square grid. And then you'll notice that some of these now have stars and some of them do not, okay? So you can see, bam, there they are. This, the ones that I've actually starred. So if you wanna go through these and then actually just click on that, that's gonna be three stars, that's gonna be three stars. Okay, ooh, yummy food, let's make that five stars. But again, I could just say five, and that does the same exact thing. 
All right, so you can see there's a lot of different ways to do it. Some of them are gonna be maybe easier than others. Now, the other thing you might wanna do is work with the flagging, okay? So let's just say, you know, I want these or I don't want them, right? I'm just gonna make it kind of just a little more simple for me to work with. So I'm just gonna tap on the letter G again, go back to my little regular photo grid, and I'm gonna look at some of these. I'm gonna say, you know what, I want them or I don't want them, okay? So for example, I don't know, I don't want that one right there. Now I can click on this little flag option right there, flag as picked or flag as rejected, so sad. You can see it's, I can do the Z or I can also do the X, okay? Either one, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and reject this one, okay? All right, nothing really happens, but when I change my view, I'll be able to see it actually happening, okay? Let's try another one. This time I'm gonna reject it, and how do I do that again? Oh, it's the X, right? That makes sense. So I'm gonna reject that one. Notice a reject pops up down below. Okay, let's do another one. I'm gonna reject that one. Okay, cool. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the different view. So I'm just gonna tap on G. I'm gonna go over to there. And you'll notice how the ones that I've rejected are now dimmed. You can see that, that's dimmed. Okay, and then some of these other ones. Uh, what was the one that I did before? Now I've lost it. Okay, but that, here, this one's dimmed right here. These two are my dimmed ones, okay? But now let's actually see what we can do in terms of our first level of viewing these things, okay? Because I only wanna view just my five stars now because this could take a long time to do all the work to actually put your starring system into place, but what's the point if we can't filter it or find them more easily, okay? So how do I do that? This is gonna be our first lesson on actually doing searching, okay? So notice here's my search and then notice here is my filter option. I click on that. And you're gonna see, it's gonna ask me very simply, hey Dave, what do you want to do? What do you want to filter by, okay? Or do you want to filter out by the different flagging options you have here? I only wanna have five star options. So I choose that and then bam, look at that. They've all now just come to the top. I'm not looking at anything else. I did all that hard work to be able to say, hey listen, these are all my five star photos. This is what I wanna work with here. Bam, fantastic. And if I wanted to, I can even make a album out of this if I wanted to, right? It's like, oh wow, that was really you know, easy to do, right? And now I wanna be able to find these once again later on because bam, here they are easily found through an album after I've actually created it, okay? So let me go ahead and just clear this out, click on the X, right? And then bam, there we are again. I'm gonna tap on the G, come back to here. Very cool, okay? So you can see there's a number of different ways to get organized, all right? So we've seen how we can do albums, we can do folders, we can do the starring system, we can do flagging, okay? We can also change the name and change the sorting, right? We can change all kinds of different ways of how we wanna view our photos and also how we wanna organize all of our photos. In our last lesson, we took a look at how we can search for our photos based off of our star system and also our flagging. But now you can search by many, many other things as well. Let's just focus here on how we can search based off of keywords. Keywords either that we're going to create or keywords that Lightroom has actually built into the system based off of its scanning of what's on the picture. Okay, so for example, if I just click up here and I just type out the word, let's just say trees. And you can see, look at that. Without me creating any kind of keyword or anything like that, it pops right up. Okay, so pretty straightforward. I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of that. You'll also notice, of course, I could just type out the word Italy. And because I have an Italy album, it's gonna show all those. Now also note that because there is geotagging metadata built into my photos, it's also gonna find those as well. So just keep that in mind. If you have that on your photos, it's gonna find it based off of that geographical location, okay? Now, one thing you might wanna do, like you're gonna see here, I'm gonna type out the word food, okay? And you're gonna say, great, all my food pops up, okay? But is that all my food? I'm not really sure, because I feel like I had more than that. So maybe you didn't get it. Let me try typing out the word pasta and do that. Wait, really? Only one pasta? I somehow doubt that, right? These are all Italy pictures. So I close that out. You're gonna see, wow, I've got a lot, a lot of these. So what you may wanna do is create your own keywords because this machine learning is pretty great, 
but is by no means perfect. So we may want to be able to then create our own keywords and then later on search by those keywords. Okay, so let's come full circle on this. So I'm gonna go ahead and just select these three just for right now and then come way down to the bottom See where I am over here, where I have my little price tag there for keywords. I click on that and I'm just going to say pasta. Great. And now that keyword has not only been created, but it's been applied all at the same time. Okay. I'm just say food. Okay, great. So now I have actually two keywords applied to this. Maybe I'm going to say Italian food, right? Because let's say I'm a food person, okay? So you can see I'm gonna be doing lots and lots of different food out there, right? So the list goes on and on and on. So now let me go ahead and just choose another one. So these two, very cool. And now I'm just gonna go ahead and choose even maybe even this third one, holding down the control key or the command key on the Mac. I click over here, I'm just gonna just type out an F for food, okay, great. You can see it helps me autofill. I'll do this time, I'm gonna say IT for Italian food, it pops right up, a little autofill, great. Love that. And then maybe you're going to do something else, right? So I'm going to just choose this one. And this time it's going to be dessert. Great. Okay. So you get the picture now. You can see all that, how I can create these things. Okay. So now let's go ahead and do a search based off of keywords. So again, earlier you saw how I can do a search up on top here, but I want to filter by only particular keywords. So when I click on my little filter option there, you'll notice here is the option for keyword. Earlier, we focused on just our star system and also our um, flagging system, but you can see here now is keyword. I click on that and I'm only looking for, let's just say pasta, come to there and then bam, there it is. Very cool, and I can see that. Now I could even also add on another keyword if I want to and then continue going on from there and then bam, I'm gonna have all my options right here easily good to go. And you can see, bam, there's another one, food, food, and pasta all at the same time. Excellent. Love that. Okay. So super easy to do, but just understand we don't want to necessarily have all of our faith and trust inside of the machine learning. We may need to go a step further to then create our own keywords to be able to organize and find all of our content a little more personalized, a little more customized for you and by you. Okay, so go ahead and pause the video, practice that, and again, we'll see you in the next lesson. Up until this point, we've talked about a number of different ways to find your photos and also organize them and sort them by different variables. Now, let's go a little bit deeper into our little search options up on top as well as all of our different filter options up above. So let's go ahead and just make sure that your filter options are then activated. So just to review, we did all of our store op star options up on top here. We also did all of our flagging options here as well. And we also took a look at how we can sort by and filter by different keywords. Now we have a number of other options up on top here that we're going to explore. So let's say I only wanna see photos that I have worked on, I have edited. So if I click on edited right here, it's a very simple yes or no. So I click on yes, I want you to notice now two things happen. Number one, of course, I see all of the photos that I have edited, very good. So these three beautiful Italy photos, you see that there's been some kind of changes that I have incurred on this within Lightroom. You'll also notice that it says yes up here. Very good, so that actually is showing me, yes, that these are the ones that I wanna see. These have been filtered out. So I can just go ahead and click on that and then everything else comes back. I can click on this and just say only, no, only the ones that I have not edited will then appear. I can go ahead and click on that and that appears everything else and clears out the note. You'll also see that I can view by different types of images. So if I click on type and I only wanna see just let's just say video, I click on video and you can see, great, only my videos are now filtered out. Very good. What about raw? Click on that and notice now I have both raw and my video. I don't want video anymore. I click on that. So it's just these now raw photos. So it just makes it very easy for you to be able to find them, right? In case you're looking at certain types versus others. Okay, very good. So let's go ahead and clear that out. And then take a look at some other options, maybe different cameras you've actually taken these pictures with, right? I'm only gonna show like my Samsung click on that, and then bam, there you go, there you have it. Okay, and you can see it actually keeps track of all of that inside of the metadata. So I'll go ahead and clear that out from my search box. Then you'll also see here is location. Automatically, 
based off of the metadata that's built into each individual photo, I'm able to see all these different locations that are built into the image. So I can see, okay, great. Now let's just take a look at only my Italy pictures. Great, fantastic. It's done the work for me. Let me clear that out. Let's try another one. Go to location and we'll try one particular part that's just only one part of Italy. Notice how it's not just all Italy, but it's gonna be one individual city within Italy. Bam, there you go, that's Palermo in Sicily. Fantastic, love that. Okay, and this is gonna be a very good option for working with our white balance, which we'll be doing in just a little bit. So I clear that out. You see, pretty amazing that we have that here. Okay, so this is something you'll definitely wanna play around with. Now, let me go ahead and take a look at our different view options as well, because I want you to see another way that we can actually take a look at different types of uh, file types. So if I go just hit my G, this is gonna come over to here. And I want you to notice that, see how these all say JPG, JPG, in the, in the lower left, right, you can see JPG. This is another way that I can actually see, well, what are my different file types? So if I click on type again and then just choose raw, you'll now see that these are all showing up as these DNG file types if you are working with raw file types. Okay, so you can see, great, that also confirms what I was just looking for. So perfect, let me go ahead and clear that out. And then finally look at all of our different sync statuses. You can see, is it syncing, synced and backed up, originally stored locally, great. So however you wanna view it, you can absolutely view that. Okay, in a little bit, we're gonna be talking about people. Notice that's grayed out because I don't actually have anything set up as a people search, but you're gonna see that Lightroom is gonna do the work for me. It's gonna find all the people in here and it's gonna automatically create albums based off of those people, right? Built into my little people section right here, which we're going to explore in just a few minutes. Okay, so go ahead and just play around with all these really, really amazing filter options and search options so you can really organize your content and see what you wanna see, how you wanna see it. The next topic we're gonna to discuss for organization is around the people searching. So you're gonna see that Lightroom does a pretty amazing job of finding people and organizing people for you. So it looks for faces and it basically does its best to say, hey, that face looks like that face, looks like that face, and then it's gonna organize them and group them together. And then what you can do is then name that organization so then ultimately you can find them easier. And then when you bring in more photos just like them, you're going to see that Lightroom will then add them to that grouping based off of that set of people. Now, where do we go to find that? You're gonna see on the left-hand side, we have this option here called people. So I'm gonna click on that. You're gonna see right away, it says here, we need to enable this. So enable people detection. If you enable people view feature, Lightroom will analyze your photos to create models of faces in order to group similar faces together. Exactly what we just discussed. By enabling this feature, you are letting us know that it is okay for Adobe to create these models on your behalf and that you have approval from the individuals featured in the photos. Now this feature is not available on images uploaded from Illinois, okay? So if you're in Illinois, you may not have this option available to you. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on enable and you're gonna see sync photos will be analyzed in the cloud ensuring bam. So we're gonna wanna actually check back later. So I'm gonna go ahead and pause the video on my end and then come right back and we'll see what this is going to do. So not gonna pause it for you, but on my end, I'm gonna pause it. You may have to do the same thing and wait for everything to get synced up with the cloud, do its machine learning, and then come right back and bam, you're gonna see that you're gonna have groups of individual organized photos based off of different people within all of your images. So go ahead and try this on your own and then come back and you're gonna see that I'm gonna have all my people views all set up and ready to go. And now you can see here, I have a few different faces living now inside of my people view. And just note that for some of you, this could take a couple of minutes, a couple of hours. Some of you might even take a couple of days, just depending on how many photos you have. And sometimes your internet connection. And then believe it or not, sometimes with Adobe itself, right? So just keep that in mind. Just be patient. It will happen. Um, sometimes it helps to actually go into the web version of it as well, which we've talked about in another lesson. All right, so now you see here we have 
four different people have shown up. And again, how did it get these? It just scanned all my photos and it found a bunch of people in here. And it said, okay, that's a person, that's a person, that's a person. Okay, so let me go back here and you can see, very good. There are these people here. And now you can see this lovely lady right there. I'm gonna go ahead and click on her face and you'll see it's gonna show me all of the photos that she is part of, right? Even though she's really small in some of these, you can see it still finds her. Now, who is she? This is mom. So guess what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna go over to here where it says add name and I'm just gonna say, this is mom. Very good. And I hit enter, go back to my people and now it should be labeled as mom. There you go. Okay, so excellent. So let's go ahead and do the rest of these. Now I'm gonna go ahead and click on this fella. That's gonna be Mario, enter, go back to people. That's Dave, enter, hit people. Okay, click on that guy. That's gonna be Jacob, enter, excellent. Now you can see, there we are, fantastic. Does a really, really nice job. Now, as I said earlier, if we add in more photos of let's just say mom or Jacob, Mario or Dave, it should find them, okay? Now it'll most likely give me a suggestion. It'll say, hey, you know what? This guy kind of looks like one of the people that you've mentioned earlier. Is it that? And you're gonna say yes. So sometimes you may have to go back into people and it's gonna, it's gonna give you a recommendation or a suggestion if it doesn't think it got it right. Because sometimes it might be a different age. Maybe you're wearing sunglasses. Maybe you're like really far away in the picture. But you'll see it actually does a really nice job. Now let's go back to all photos. And I'm just gonna type in mom up on top, hit enter, and you will see all mom shots come up. So you can see how it comes back full circle. Okay, so I'll go ahead and clear that out and come back to all photos. And the last thing you're gonna see here is we should now have a new ability to search up on top here with our filters. Okay, so if I click on this little drop down, you're gonna see, look at that all four of my people are here. So I can just very simply go to Jacob and then bam, there it is. Now Jacob shows up here. Let's go back here. Let's search for Mario. Excellent. And there we are. Okay. So pretty neat, pretty great way to stay organized. Give it a shot. Try it out with all your friends and family and people in your life. Okay. So try that. See you in the next video and have fun. Now, so far we've been discussing Lightroom in the desktop version. So I'm just gonna take a quick little detour to show you what it looks like in the Lightroom web version. Okay, so currently I am at a website, lightroom.adobe.com inside my browser. And I have logged in with my account. You can see there I am right there to be able to log into my account. So as I've said before, Lightroom CC is all about the cloud, right? So everything that I have done on my computer within the desktop version will then show up here. Also note that some things may not show up here, okay? So it's not 100% exactly the same, so just keep that in mind and let's explore what some of these options are. Okay, so number one, you can see it's brought in all my albums, which is pretty great. So I can click on those. There's my Italy all, you can see I don't need to see how albums work, but thank you very much. <laughs> okay, and you can see here, that is there. Okay, all my food, there's my Colorado. Excellent, that's great. Okay, let me come back to all my photos. You can see all photos. I have 100 photos here. Fantastic, I can scroll down, I can see all my photos here. You'll also notice that the interface, somewhat similar, but not exactly the same. You can see I can go to my different grid views, I can sort out by different things, and I can also zoom in and out, taking a look at things a little bit differently, okay? Now, if I open up to a photo, let me just go ahead and open this up, you'll see that I do get some of the options and some of the options I do not, right, in terms of all my fitting and everything like that, I don't see those here, but I do have the ability to star them and to flag them, okay, which is kinda nice, okay? So let me just go ahead and get out of that, I'm just gonna hit the escape key, and then I come right back to here. Now, if I wanted to create an album from here, I can very easily do that. So when I click on this here, I can create an album based off of my photos here. And then of course, it will be reflected over here with all my other albums. And then it will be reflected on my desktop version, on my mobile version as well. Okay, so pretty cool. 
right? Then the other thing you're gonna see that is similar, but then also a little bit of variation from our desktop version is our ability to filter. Okay, so you can see the filter options are great. You can see, again, I can just show only things that have certain stars, only things that are you know accepted or rejected based on the flags. And then I also have just show me photos and just show me videos. But some other things you're missing, right? So let me just go ahead and jump right back to here where we can see, okay, great. A lot of stuff is no longer here, like my location, the camera type, okay? And even the keywords are missing. Okay, so you just want to kind of know that some of your functionality may be limited on uh, different platforms. Okay, so let me come right back to here. Okay, excellent. So there we are, but let's just at least take a look at how I can still have some similarity. There's my five stars that I applied earlier, and now they show up here. And what's nice about all this, by the way, is that a lot of your keyboard shortcuts are going to be the same. Click on G, click on G, click on P. You can see what it does there brings back the side pane, click on G again. You can see that shows your different grids in different ways, okay? And then again, you'll see some other options that are similar, like the ability to share, your ability to see your notifications, your ability to search, but note that it's maybe about 80% of the functionality. All right, so go ahead and test those out, play around with it, and then uh, we'll come back to the desktop version. We are now going to begin our discussion on how we can edit and enhance our photos. So we're gonna start off um, relatively slow. We're gonna use some of the automated tools built into Lightroom, including what we call our profiles, our presets, and a few other filters that are gonna be available for each other. Okay, so now let's go ahead and see what we can do. So I'm gonna work with this photo here where I have this beautiful food photo, but in my opinion, not as great as it could be. Like the lighting is a little bit off, the colors could be brought through a little bit, saturation, vibrance, all that good stuff. But this is my first day in Lightroom and I don't really know what to do. But I do know that I can very easily just double click on it and then I can take a look at it and get a better view. It's like, okay, good, not great. So let's explore one way that we could address this kind of, you know, not as good photos we like. I don't want to make any particular judgments on it, but maybe it's about the color and the light, you know, and the shadows and, you know, all that good stuff here. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over here to our editing options. So if you recall, we can just simply click on that or we can just hit the E key for edit. And what we're going to do at first is explore some of our presets. You'll notice here is a bunch of presets for us to work with. And you'll see here, I was even like pre presets where it's like, listen, I'm just feeling really lazy, but I do trust that Lightroom is going to work for me. So I can very easily click on this auto if I want to. So let's just take a look at that. I'm going to click on auto and you can see, I'll do before and after click on that. Great. All right. Yes. No. All right. Not too bad. I'm going to keep that off for right now. Just want you to see what it can do if I just do black and white automatic. Okay. Not as great. I really like those colors. So I'm going to undo that just by doing command or control Z. Okay. Very good. Now let's just take a look at what some of our presets are. And this is gonna be very much a spice to taste type of thing for you, okay? You'll just wanna really explore, find the one that you like, and then go for it. And then I'll show you later how you can make your own personal enhancements here. So I choose presets here. You're gonna see a lot of options are gonna appear here. Just notice how they're all organized by different types of categories, like all around portraits, cinematic, right? Different style things, color, et cetera, different creative things. Let's expand that out. Great. And what's nice about this is if you move your mouse over these, you're gonna get instant real live preview of what these things actually do. Here's high contrast, here's bright. Okay, cool light, okay, something a little bit different, a little more creative, okay? And it's like, in order to achieve these effects, it would take me a very long time to really get to this, right? So you can see, very cool, I can very easily just add these on here. So I'm gonna go back up to my color. I'm just gonna choose maybe bright, and there we have it, cool. And that's a little bit better for me, okay? So what I want you to notice also is that within this little preset menu, you're gonna have a few options here as well. Number one, of course, you can close this out. Number two, you can see how I can just reset it. I'm gonna undo that to go right back to it. And then also notice this ellipsis here where you can now create a preset too. And you're gonna to wanna to do something like that after you've already applied your own 
different parameters and variables on your photo to say, hey, listen, I use this a lot, so I might want to create my own preset, not just what Lightroom has given me, okay? That's great. You'll also see here is this manage preset, because maybe there's things that you never use, right? Like you're just not a portrait person, so don't show me those Lightroom, so I can just go ahead and uncheck, 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 right? And then bam, those are gonna be gone. They're not gonna be showing up anymore, so pretty neat. And also note that you can also import presets. It's a little bit out of the scope of this class, but you can import them from potentially another Lightroom file if you wanted to, or from another marketplace as well. Okay, so bam, that's pretty cool, right? Pretty easy to do. So let me go ahead and just close this out. And what I want you to notice is that these particular presets have also affected all of what my editing tools have shown me inside of potentially my light color and effects without me really having to do anything. So when I click on light, you'll see that before it was all zeroed out, but what Lightroom did was it actually changed all these things for me. Okay, so if I wanted to actually make some changes, I can very, very easily do that going into all these. What this is going to do for you, in addition to improving your photos, it's gonna allow you to learn a little bit more about what some of these features do. Okay, so if I actually were to choose some of these presets and I make some changes here, I can then go back into my editing options for my light, color, and effects and see what in fact I can do manually once I see what the presets do. Okay, so this is something you'll wanna just again, spice the taste, see what it can do, and then maybe you're happy with this. Maybe you're not gonna go deeper into some of these more nuanced and sophisticated and more complex options, but in this class we are going to, but maybe this is where it ends for you and you're like, listen, they have, they've offered everything I need and I can just go ahead and use those presets and I'm gonna have amazing photos that way. All right, so go ahead, pause the video, practice up looking at those presets right, understand what they do, how to access them. And then if you're feeling bold, go ahead and create new presets on your own. In this lesson, we're gonna talk more about what we call profiles. Earlier, we were talking about presets. Profiles and presets kind of overlap in the way, the fact that you are gonna have these pre-existing, just sort of like off the shelf type of uh, features available for you. Okay, so you're gonna see where they differ is that the profiles are essentially a starting place and a foundation for you, but they don't affect all of your editing options like we saw earlier, how we're not actually gonna see how it's gonna affect all of our light and our color and effects and all that stuff. So it essentially, it starts you off as if the photo was that way to begin with. So if you want to work with actually playing around with all of these and having it change, the actual pixels on these little slide rulers here, then you'd wanna work with the presets. Let's take a look at what the profiles look like so we can see what the difference is. So just notice here I have color and monochrome right there. So if I choose color right now, this is a color photo. You're gonna see kind of hiding in plain sight is this little guy right here. You may choose to ignore that because it's just right there, it's not calling too much attention to itself, but we are gonna bring it out here and you're gonna see how I have a number of different categories for profiles, okay? So understand again the difference between profiles and presets and also understand the similarities. So let's just take a look at what some of these options are. Here under artistic, you're gonna see these may look familiar to you, like if you've seen filters on your phone, they're very similar. So if I just move my mouse over these, I can very easily say, oh, you know what, I like that one better, artistic this, artistic that. Okay, great. This is just a starting point, we don't have to, cling to this one, we don't have to commit anything like that. Okay, let me come down here to black and white, see what those options are. Lots of different options here, just in terms of maybe a little more contrast, a little bit of a chrome quality. Great, I love these. You know what, I wanna remember this one for the future. So guess what? I can favorite this. So you'll see I click on that little star over here in the upper right of that little thumbnail, and that's gonna be there for me to use for other photos, because I really like these. Wow, they really do give you a lot of options here. Cool, and they even tell you kind of what they're gonna be, like a blue filter. Okay, so that's gonna bring out a lot of the blues inside of what's happening there originally. If you have a lot of blues in there, that could be helpful. An orange one, you can see that's kind of nice. I have a lot of orange in these, so that might work as well. Okay, you'll also notice that when you click on these, you can adjust the degree of them as well. Okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead and just click and drag, 
and you can see how it actually gets a little bit more contrast, right? A little more confident, a little more black and white, but again, more than anything, it's gonna be a little more contrast in this case, because it is black and white. All right, so let's just go ahead and take a look at some of these other ones. Let's go over here to modern, and very easily, I can just override that. Okay, so that's kind of a neat one, this little modern 01, I like that one. Again, I click on it, and I'm gonna see more options here, like okay, you can see again a little bit more, not just contrast this time, but we call saturation, a little more vibrance, maybe a little bit sharp. Just keep, it, keep your eye on going too much because then it could look a little kind of fakey or maybe too old, but that's possibly the look you're looking for, okay? So I love that. And I also want to save that for later. I love that preset. Very good, good to go, okay? So it's really that easy, right? So maybe this is the place where you are starting off at and then I can go back and then start playing around with all of these once I say, okay, this is a good starting place for me to then start manipulating my photos. And what I wanna reiterate for you is the fact that when we go into all of these different settings here for light, color, and effect, because I'm now working with the profile, right, as opposed to a preset, these little dials are not getting affected, okay? So it's just a little bit of a difference there. Okay, so this is just a really quick, easy way to apply some of these. You're gonna find some of your own kind of you know favorite ones, and then you'll be able to see you can access them very easily within the presets. And of course, like I showed you earlier, you can take a look at your individual profiles, right? And then you can take a look at your little favorites right there very easily as well. Click over here, and you'll be able to see here are also your favorites as well, okay? So pause the video, practice that, and you're gonna see, maybe again, this is the end of the line for you. You're like, oh my God, I thought presets were the bomb and now that's all I really needed. And now you take a look at profiles and you're like, oh man, this is even better. I don't need to know any of that other fancy stuff. And then here you go. So lots of really nice gifts from Lightroom. Try them out. Now we have a pretty good foundation for how some of our presets work and how some of our profiles work. Let's now go a little bit more manual into some of our editing tools. So I'm looking at this photo and I'm, I'm pretty happy with it, but I think that maybe I can kind of add a little more contrast, maybe a little bit more kind of color vibrancy to come out from this. Now, believe it or not, when you're working with color, you really are thinking about a lot of this sort of relationships between all of the different colors on the actual image, okay? so. When you're working with your different contrasts and your different levels of shadows and highlights and midtones, that's actually gonna bring out a lot more color than you realize, right? So a lot of times, rather than going right to the color and the saturation and the hue, I will go to the lighting section. So let's just go ahead and check that out. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit the E key, and that's gonna bring up my editing tools, okay? And of course, alternatively, you can come over to here and then just go ahead and click on that. But remember the keyboard shortcut, really nice one. Okay, now you're gonna see that I have this light option right here. I click on that and that's gonna open up to a number of different light options for me. Now, just as a nice little review for you, um, in terms of how these little tools work, in terms of how you wanna you know, adjust some of these properties, is just to simply click and drag on these going up and down. Okay, you'll also remember how you can right click on these to reset them. You can also reset the size of all of these little slide rulers and everything. Now you'll also notice that as I click and drag to the right, you'll see how I have these little numbers pop up. So if you know exactly what numbers you want, you can go ahead and change those, right? So if I want this to be exactly 0.5, I can very easily do that and that changes there. Okay, that might be a little bit easier than you, you know, dragging on these. Also note, if I wanna reset this back to zero, I can simply just double click on that and that takes me right back to zero. Okay, so just a good little review and that's gonna be pretty much the same for all these little sliders that we're gonna see in some of these other editing tools. Okay, so let's just explore what we have here on these you know, basic settings. We have our exposure, contrast, highlights, shadows, whites, and blacks. So exposure is just basically the overall light that we're gonna see here. Now this isn't a bad photo, but exposure might be really good for something that was taken indoors, bad lighting, you know, maybe you even used a flash too much, so you wanna have less exposure. And that's just gonna kind of blast it out the entire photo. So I do that and notice how it just 
just pretty much like doesn't discriminate over certain parts of the photo. I'm going to double click on that to bring that back to zero. And so sometimes you may want just a tiny, tiny little bit of exposure. So let's just experiment with that. I'm just going to bring this up a tiny, tiny bit. Okay, not too bad. Now, if you recall, if I want to do a sort of before and after to be able to compare, I can come down to the bottom here where I can say show original. And you can see I can go back and forth between them. And you can see, in my opinion, it's actually a little bit of an improvement. Now also see that I can do the keyboard shortcut of backslash to do the same thing. So that's one that you'll probably want to start to know a little bit better. Okay, so excellent. So I'm back to here. And now I'm going to start working with the contrast now. So your contrast is basically going to make a difference between the darkest colors and the lightest colors and kind of bring out the contrast depending on which direction you go. You see now I have a little more contrast and I have a little less contrast. And you can see that does make a photo pop. It actually adds in a little more sharpness between all of the different color spectrums that we see here. Again, let's do a before and after. Okay, and I think we're going in the right direction. Okay, now let's talk about the highlights. Okay, highlights are only gonna focus on one part of your image. And that's a really nice thing because as opposed to our exposure and our contrast, I mean, mostly exposure, where it just focuses on the entire image, highlights only focus on the lightest parts of the image. So let's just go ahead and check that out. So if I just go ahead and move this up, just keep an eye on just the lightest parts of the picture and the darkest parts of the picture, right? So nothing is really getting affected that's super dark. Okay, let me go ahead and make this. If you take a look at the clouds, maybe, you can see that how the clouds are getting a little more contrasty as I bring this down lower. So I really wanna make those stand out. Okay, but maybe you want to make some of the edges of like, just say the buildings come out a little bit more, you can go ahead and bring that up. So depending on where you want people's sort of focus to be, you would go ahead and bring that up or bring that down. So if it really is about the clouds, and maybe I bring that down. So there is that kind of contrast between the cloud and, and its background it gives it a little more sharpness. I'm going to bring that up a tiny bit. And again, let's do before and after. Very nice. Happy with that. All right, and it's the same story with the shadows as the highlights, where the shadows only focus on the darkest parts of the photo. So let's go ahead and bring that down this time. Let's see what that does. Okay, I'm not sure if I like that. Let's bring it up this time. And you can see only the darkest parts now get affected. You see that? So it's kind of making them a little bit lighter. But notice, look at like the white trimming on some of the buildings. They don't get affected. The clouds don't get really get affected. Some of the more of the midtones within the clouds might get affected a little bit. But you can see, all right, not too bad, adding a little bit more sort of vibrancy to my image. Okay, now the whites and the blacks, that actually focus on literally the darkest part and the lightest part of the photo. Okay, so you really, just in case how much contrast you want, you can work with these, right? So let me just go ahead and just click and drag on the whitest, and you can see how that really flashes out everything that's like really, really white here, right? I can bring that down. And you'll know when the time is right to do that. So I can bring this down and only focus this on those parts. And that actually really makes the sky pop a lot better. So let's go ahead and do that same thing with the black. Okay, excellent. I really like that. Now, within the lighting panel, you are going to have another option here called the point curve. Okay, this might be a little bit more advanced, but certainly necessary. So the curves that we're talking about here is basically the curves that are going throughout the different light channels, right? And the different color channels. So we have our midtones, our highlights, and our shadows, but we have this nice fluid spectrum that's basically allowing us to control where do we want our lights and shadows, how high we want them to go or low we want them to go. So you can play around with these, right? So if you kind of move this up, notice how that kind of blasts it all out. You can go over to here. This is going to be all my shadows there. You can see you can bring this in right there. Okay, so you really kind of want to spice to taste with these. You can even come into the middle and just start creating different ones if you like. If you know what you're doing, if you really want to sort of come in here and just really manipulate individual segments of these, you absolutely can. I'm going to go ahead and right click and just say uh, to reset all of these. Now, what a lot of you may want to do is just focus on certain colors within your actual image and only playing around with those. So as an example, I'm just going to choose my blue. I click on that. And now let me just go ahead and just bring this 
in a little bit. And you can see all the blues, only the blues now get affected. Let me go ahead and right click on that, reset it. Very good, how about the reds? Okay, I have a lot less red here than the blue. So it's, but believe it or not, a lot of these houses and whatnot have a little bit of red in them. So just be prepared for that. So now this is gonna affect the red. So maybe you kind of want to be a little more creative, but notice how I'm doing this. And this is actually affecting just the red part of it. Okay. So again, this is going to be about the shadows, the midtones, and the highlights. Okay. So you just want to kind of keep that in mind that if you want to go a little bit further, a little more advanced, a little more sophisticated, you do have the ability to work with our little point curves. All right. Let me go ahead and reset that and show you one last thing here. And that's going to be this guy right here. This is going to be the parametric curve. You click on that. And this may be possibly a little bit more straightforward for you. Because again, you can see here are my shadows, my midtones, and my highlights. And if you play around with these, this might give you a little more kind of fluidity in terms of how you want to be working, right? So you can see how I can just very nicely, fluidly play around with these. Okay, so let's move this over a little bit and then come back over to here. And then you have just a nice little nudge on the shadows and a little bit on the highlights right there. And then one more time, let's go ahead and check it out before and after. And I am pretty happy with that. Okay. Now, if you like this, if you like what you've done, you can go over to here and then go ahead and click on the little ellipsis over here. And you can say, hey, listen, I'm going to copy these settings. Okay, pretty cool. So you can easily do that because if you have a lot of photos that are like this, you can copy them and then later on paste your settings as well. So this will save you a lot of time, a lot of energy, a lot of stress working with these. Okay, and then of course, earlier we talked about all presets. You can save your preset, right? If I can go ahead and just create a preset based off of this. So I'll just call this lighting 01 DC for me. Okay, and then I'm gonna go ahead and just click save. So now I can pretty much apply that to any photo moving forward because now it's saved from here on out and making it much more efficient for me and saving me a lot of time. Okay, so go ahead and pause the video, find a few photos to practice on and we'll see you in the next lesson. In this next lesson, we are going to focus on white balance. Now, you're gonna see that many times when you take a photo that's indoors or maybe with a certain ISO number, um, just different kind of lighting, you may get this kind of casting. Sometimes it's gonna be an orange cast, which is a white balance or whatever temperature that's gonna be a little bit higher. Or you might actually see something that's gonna be a blue, which is gonna be a little bit of a cooler of a temperature. Now, white balance is gonna allow us to work with that. Okay, so that's how we are going to focus on these kind of color casting things. You can see that Lightroom actually does a really nice job of working with this. Now, we just worked on the lighting aspect of things. So I'm gonna to wanna to just kind of talk very quickly about one really neat feature you can use to kind of go back and forth between the different tools that we have here in a much more sort of efficient way. Because notice I still have my light panel open from the last exercise. And when I come down here to color, I want you to notice how like I have to kind of scroll up and down because this is still, you know, um, expanded. Okay. Now I have to go back here and I have to just click on that to do that. But what if I don't want to do that? What if I want to only have one open at the same time? So if I click on these little three dots here, you'll notice there's this option to have single panel mode. So when I click on that, you're gonna see that only one panel will be open at a time. So when I click on color, that opens up. Watch what happens when I click on light. It closes down color automatically, right? Keeping light open. So let's go ahead and come down to color and now it's gonna close down light, okay? So pretty cool. All right, now let's go ahead and check out how we can make this photo look a little bit better. So currently I'm inside of my color panel here. And you'll really notice here that there is this white balance option for me right here. And there is also my temp. Okay, so we talked earlier about the temperature. So the temperature typically is going to be orange is going to run hot, blue is going to run cold. Okay, so you can see depending on how your photo came out is going to determine what kind of changes you make on here. All right, now I want you to just notice a few different things as far as 
um, how this interface works. I want you to notice this little drop down here. It says as shot. This is going to show me my original here versus, hey, guess what? I can go over here to auto and you're going to see what Lightroom is going to now make its best guess for, oh, you know what? That's actually a lot better. So you can see what it's done. So let me come back to as shot. And you can see, all right, you know what? Not so good. Lightroom did a pretty darn good job there. Okay, let's go ahead and click on that again. Let's go back to custom. And you can see all that does is take us back to these little slide rules here. Okay, so pretty much the same thing as where we start from. And it's going to allow us to now manipulate these. All right, so let's just take a look at what it did for the auto. So you'll see how it actually brought the color temperature down to a little bit colder, away from the orange side of it, right? Taking all that color cast away. And then it also added on a little bit of a tint to it as well, okay? And what it did is just basically added on a different color of a tint to basically focus on that tint to bring that out a little bit more. So let's just use this as a starting point so we can now manipulate just to see what it does. So I'm just gonna go ahead and bring this up a little bit more towards the blue. Let's see what that does, that's a little bit too much. Let's bring this a little bit less. I actually kinda like that a little bit less. Okay, it's a little better. All right, now my tints, let's just kind of bring this all the way over to here and see what that is going to do. You see that it's kind of added on a little more green. That's going to add a little more red to it. Okay, and then, okay, not too bad. Now, one thing to note is that you don't have to stick with one panel, right? So after I've done my color, I can go over to here to light, and then I can start playing around with some of my highlights and my shadows, et cetera, and see how that's going to work for me. So if I just bring these up a little bit, that actually may help my photo a little bit more. You can see, oh, kind of like that, right? So that was a good move to do that. Let's bring up my contrast a little bit more as well. Okay, yeah, good. Now it's coming a little more textured. All right, so let me go ahead and close this out. And again, notice I I'm gonna actually go back to color and just watch how the single panel works. Very nice, I don't have to go scrolling up and down. Okay, now I really like that. But let me just show you one thing here that you may appreciate as well. Okay, that you can use this little eyedropper to also do sort of like kind of an auto thing that's based off of the kind of like neutral color gray. So if we find something that's kind of gray in our photo, we may want to use that as sort of our kind of midpoint to be able to basically establish this sort of like neutral color to be able to, you know, use it. You can see here, it says, use it to click on something in the photo that should be a neutral color to automatically correct the temperature in the tent. Okay, they're seeing it much better than I could. Okay, so let's go ahead now. I'm gonna reset this. Okay, say as shot, come back to this. And then I noticed there was some gray here. So let's just see how that works. I'm gonna click on this little eyedropper and then I'm gonna come over to here to what might be gray, and guess what? Not bad, pretty perfect, All right? So I like that, and it pretty much did mostly what the auto did, okay? But for some of you, it may not be doing that, so I just wanna give you additional options that you could be working with, okay? So that's white balance. Find some other photos that may work for you, but I'm very happy with this, and it's a huge improvement. This has been plaguing me for a long time. How do I fix this? It was such a great shot right, such an interesting place. Now I brought it back to life exactly how I saw it when I was there. Okay, pause the video, practice this, and we'll see you in the next lesson. Now I'd just like to discuss a quick sidebar about raw photos. Some of you may be working with raw photos as opposed to JPEGs. So essentially a raw photo is a minimally processed photo, right? So it's gonna give you a little more of an open canvas to work with your photos in a little more degree than a JPEG, because JPEGs come more or less complete, but of course we can edit them. Raw files give you a lot more options, and Lightroom understands that. Now this is a raw photo. You should all have access to this inside of the class files. Now I want you to notice that if I go over to my editing tools and I go over here to lighting, you're gonna have actually potentially more options here under your profile than you would otherwise with working with the JPEG. So you can see there's gonna be different ones here. And also if I go over to here to my color, you're gonna see I'm gonna have different ones here as well. Okay, so if you remember the last video I showed you, we only had a couple of options under my white balance. Here, I'm gonna be able to actually take a look at some of these other ones. If I go over here to cloudy, I'm gonna have more options there. Do you see that? And if I have my little backslash, you can see the difference there. Okay, and see that allows for just different, you know, and to a certain degree, you know, better and more. But I just want you to understand how 
Lightroom allows you to work with raw photos and also how you're going to see additional options that you may not otherwise see. So if you are working with raw, take a look under the hood under some of these little panels and you'll be able to see what you can do with it. Okay, so check that out and we'll see you in the next lesson. In this lesson, we're going to talk about saturation. So saturation essentially is just the degree of color that you see. So if I want to make my greens greener, my purples more purple, reds redder, all that kind of stuff you can do. If you have no saturation at all, then it just becomes grayscale or black and white photo. So we're going to just stay over here within our color panel. And I want you to notice here is saturation. And then in a second, we're going to go over here to our color mixer. So if I just now just blast out the saturation, just click and drag all the way to the right, notice how everything gets a little more rich in color. Okay, if I bring it down to nothing, then it becomes essentially a grayscale photo. I'm gonna go ahead and double click on that. But, you know, that's great. If, you, if your colors are coming a little bit, just, you know, a little more drab, you can just do full scale. But really what I like to do is focus on individual colors to make certain things pop. So that's where this color mixer is going to come in here. You can see again, here's the color mixer. So when I click on that, you're gonna see how it's gonna pop down to a number of different subdivisions for each individual color channel. All right, so you can see I have this adjust for saturation. Now, if I click on this drop down, you're gonna see I can adjust for color, I can adjust for hue and luminance, okay? So let's just explore what these are gonna do for us. So you can see the different colors that I have here. So I've got green and I've got a little bit of yellow and I've obviously got this nice little purple here. All right, so let's just say, for example, I wanted to make my greens pop out a little bit. Guess what? I have a green section right there. So when I click and drag on that, I'm gonna go a little bit further to the right or a little bit to the left. You can see how it's only adjusting the greens in the photo, right? You can see that it's kind of nice. I really want those to pop out a little bit. That's great. What about this purple? Okay, so do I see purple there? I certainly do. So let's just go ahead and bring that up so I can bring it. So my purples are gonna come up that much more. Let's bring it down so you can really see the difference. And they really, really make that pop out. Why not? How about my yellows? So let's click and drag on that. Really nice. So I've just kind of isolated each individual part to the degree of saturation, the degree of color that I wanna see pop out for each of these. Now you might wanna be even a little more artistic where you can say, hey, listen, let's actually make just the foreground pop out. So let's bring our greens down to no saturation. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, kind of interesting, right? How about my yellows? You can see, all right, oh, that makes just my purple stick out. Wow, kind of interesting, right? So if you wanna be a little more creative, you can easily do that using saturation, believe it or not. Now let's take a look at some of our other adjustments within the color mixer. So if you click on the drop down, you're gonna see here, I can also change colors on this, right? So you can see, maybe you only wanna focus on one particular color itself on here, adjusting the hue, saturation, and luminance. So if I go over to here to this yellow, what that's gonna do is only gonna affect just the color yellow to then maybe change that color to something else. So if I just go ahead and drag that all the way over to the left, notice how it's only affecting all the yellows in there, changing the hue of that, okay? So I double click on that. And this will do very similar to what we saw before with our saturation, only affecting the saturation of whatever color I chose. In this case, it's gonna be the yellow. And the luminance is just gonna be the darkness and the lightness of something. So you can go ahead and make that lighter or darker, okay? And that's very similar to what we would see here where we're gonna see our luminance and our saturation. So you can see, so only saturation for these individual colors here, again, where we were a second ago, just the hue for all of these individual colors here, you're gonna see it's gonna be very similar. So again, let's make our green pop a little bit more. You can see, excellent. And now just the luminance for certain colors here as well. Okay, so again, let's just go ahead and maybe make our purple pop out a little bit more light, you can see that, or a little bit more contrast. So you can see it's all about control. And now I've ended up on a very different photo. So you can see where I started from, and now here I am, giving a little bit more of a sort of a spotlight to certain parts versus others than where we started from. Do you see that? 
okay? A little before, a little bit after, and you can see, wow, I can have a very different photo in terms of my own creative process. So you can see we have a lot of options to work with within our color options, within our color mixer, including our saturation, again, to make our colors pop out, or you want to leach them out and maybe have more of a grayscale. And then we have all of our different adjustments under the color mixer for the hue, the saturation, and the luminance. And then again, isolating potentially just individual colors so the other ones don't get affected, but that one particular color then gets the modification that you're looking for. All right, so please go ahead and pause the video, practice this, you're gonna see there's lots of opportunities. And again, don't forget you can mix these with other panels as well by going into light and maybe coming back to other potential parts within your temperature, your white balance, etc. Okay, so pause the video, practice this, and we'll see you in the next lesson. Now we've discussed what saturation does. Remember saturation just adds color and more color to whatever color is on the screen. So if I wanna have these be a little more blue, a little more red, a little more whatever is going on, you can see that that can actually add on a lot to it. But there might be a little bit of a limitation when you're working with skin tones. So if I just add a little more to saturation here, notice how he gets a little bit more orange there, okay? Not exactly what I want. So that's where vibrance comes in. Vibrance is gonna allow me to actually add on color to everything but the skin tone. So it's actually kind of a nice feature and you know a little bit misrepresented in terms of how we name it. <laughs> okay, that's how Lightroom names it. So it's a little bit harder to understand if you haven't actually worked with it before. So let's now just add in a little bit of vibrance to this and just keep an eye on the blue of his shirt. Okay, not too bad. You see that? Maybe I don't wanna to go too much, but you can see that adds on a lot more. So let me just see before and after. You can see his blue really gets a little more confident but his skin tones don't really get affected by it too much. Okay, you can see that, not too bad. But if he is getting a little bit too orange, guess what? I can then just bring it slightly down on the temperature that we've talked about, maybe not that much, maybe just go down like, okay, it's not too bad, I just went like negative two there. And then I can bring this up a little bit more, just in case his skin is getting affected a little bit or undesirably. And you can see before and after, not too bad. And everything in the background also gets affected a little bit, right? Because this is the vibrance, it's affecting everything in the photo, but hopefully not the skin tones. All right, so anytime you wanna add a little bit of color, but it is affecting the skin tones when you are working with your saturation, go to the vibrance. In this lesson, we're gonna learn about how to make our photos pop. And namely, we're gonna be working with texture, clarity, and a little bit of sharpening. So let's just define how Lightroom sees something as popping, right? As what's actually making our eyes see something as looking at having more clarity, right? It's actually looking a little more sharpened. What's happening is that the edges on each individual object on the foreground tend to get a little bit more sharpened so they contrast with other objects on your image. Okay, so that's giving the illusion of sharpness and clarity. So it really pops out. So let's just take a look at some of these examples. So if you look over here on the right-hand side, inside of my effects panel, you're gonna see how I have texture and I have clarity. Your texture is really good for making your highlights have a little bit more clarity, have a little more sharpening. Well, your clarity is gonna be focusing more on your mid-tones to have those have a little more sharpening effects. Okay, and then we're gonna get into sharpening as well. And you can play around with those, but I do think that our texture and our clarity have a little more effect, right? So we're gonna be able to compare those two, or those three, that is. Okay, so let's just take a look, first of all, at what clarity can do for us. So I'm gonna just simply click and drag left and right so you can see the difference. But I want you to keep an eye on some of our objects in the foreground, like namely, you know, our peppers here, and you're gonna see our grapes and our walnuts, and maybe even some things over here and even things in the background. So let's just take a look at them. I'm just gonna click and drag a little bit to the right. And if you're noticing, a little bit more texture there, right? A little bit pops out a little bit more, right? So let's just do a before and after, just gonna do my backslash. And then you can really, really see it. Like, look at that, it's like night and day. That's like the photo 
that I wish I had taken. That's the photo that my eyes see. That's like a nice, bright, sunny day with perfect lighting, right? You see that? Fantastic. Now let's just add on a little bit of texture. And again, this is gonna affect more of our highlights on the images. So you're gonna see how that's gonna make some of our highlights pop out, have a little more contrast and bring those edges out a little bit. So if I just simply click and drag, it's a little more subtle. Okay, it's not affecting everything, but you can see some of those little kind of hot points on there get a little bit more textured, right? You can see how they pop out a little bit more. Okay, so if I just double click to get rid of that, right? Come right back, drag it over, and you can see, wow, that does make a difference that I actually do need both of those. So again, let's do a before and after, and wow, that is really cool, all right? But do keep an eye on going too high with these, right? Because you might get something that could be a little bit unreal, if you will, right? So it actually might make the images looking a little bit too kind of like noisy. So if that's ever the case, you can always bring down the, you know, the noise or whatever and work with them this way. Now, let me go ahead and just um, reset these. And we can just take a look at the difference between working with our texture and clarity to our sharpening. So let me go ahead and just bring up my sharpening quite a bit. And you can see, it doesn't really do that great of a job. You can see before and after. All right, so not really a big fan of what this is gonna do here. However, we might be able to find another image where sharpening is going to work for us. But for this particular one, I am preferring texture and clarity. So let's take a look at another photo that may work a little bit better for us because there's a lot of detail here. Typically, if you're working with something that's a nice close-up shot, that is where sharpening may benefit you potentially a little bit better. But of course, you'll want to experiment. So let me come back to my photos. I'm going to hit the P key and then hit the G key and then bam, there I am back to my grid. And I'm going to go to a photo that is going to be maybe this pasta here. Okay. And let's just take a look at uh, my editing options. And what I'm going to do is just now tinker with my sharpening. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and just reset anything that's here. All right, very good. And now let's play around with that. Okay, so let me just reset that. Okay, good. So fantastic. There we have this. All right, it's not too bad. But let me bring up the sharpening on this and just take a look at the edges of these beautiful little mushrooms here. And we'll just see how that's going to maybe pop out a little bit more. Let's do a before and after. Can you see that? So this does work for certain photos. And you see, especially when there's not a lot of like competing elements on there, as opposed to where we had all of our fruits and vegetables and everything, that that was a little bit kind of busier, but it still worked very well for other features. So we can certainly work with our clarity and our texture, but when we have these nice little close-up shops, sharpening might be the best, and you can see how it is finding all these great little edges here. All right, but maybe you wanna use a little bit of both. So if I come back over here to effects, and I'm gonna bring up my clarity a little bit, like you can see, not too bad, right? So maybe you're getting kind of a little bit of a different look. So if I just double click on that, you can see that, and that brings up everything 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 so it's really i don't want them to compete with each other just know that you have lots of tools in your tool on your tool belt to be able to apply a variety of different features and functions and effects to be able to get the look that you want so definitely experiment it's not a whole lot that you can lose with this so please go ahead and pause the video practice it up and we'll see you in the next lesson Let's now explore how we can create a black and white photo, but let's go a little bit deeper than just the basics. So earlier we talked about how we can now go to the editing tool and then we can see how we have the option for black and white right up on top here. When I click on that, you can see that's really nice and bam, maybe you wanna stop there. But if you wanna have a little more texture and a little more kind of gravitas with your photo, have it kind of stand out, a little more vibrance, a little more contrast, we're gonna go into something a little bit deeper, which is, believe it or not, gonna go under color. Now, you will see that when I go into color, I'm gonna have an option called the black and white mixer. When you're working with just color, you're gonna see the color mixer. But now, because we are working with black and white, we'll be able to out actually now play around with all the original colors that are living beneath 
this black and white filter. So if we now just hit the backslash key to see the original, we'll see that there's some blues and oranges and yellows, right? Maybe a little bit of purple and all that good stuff. And that's what we wanna really focus on so we can get a little bit of texture on there. So if I now come down here to my black and white mixer and just bring up my yellows a little bit, I want you to notice how that is now being affected, right? Just those parts there. So it's bringing out a little bit more texture than I wouldn't have seen otherwise, right? So let's just bring that down a little bit, okay? And then also we talked about how we had some blues. Okay, let's bring that down a little bit. Okay, and again, let's just do our before and after, see other colors that are there. All right, and then maybe we have a little bit of orange there. So let's just, oh, that's nice. You can see that brings in a little bit more sharpness or maybe you want a little less. Okay, it's really all about the control to be able to show what we want to show in a little bit more sort of pronounced way. All right, and of course, we don't want to stop there because you're going to see that you have other options in terms of working with our texture and our clarity and all this other good stuff if you want to, right? So we can go ahead and bring these up just the same. Oh, wow, that really makes a big, big difference. Maybe you wanna come back over here to light and you wanna play around with some of your exposure and your highlights and your shadows would be really nice. Oh, wow, that's really coming together. And that's pretty perfect. And for some of you, if you love this style, don't forget, you can always save this as a preset. Okay, so this is kind of bringing it all together, right? If you really think about it, like this is a number of different features and functions that we can come together and say, wow, this is maybe a project that I want to create. And I'm kind of using all the different tools from my toolbox, a whole handful of things, different kind of mixers. I'm working with my light. I'm working with my different special effects for sharpening and texture and my exposure right? All those good things that you can now have it coalesce into one project. All right. So go ahead and give this a shot and then we will see you in the next lesson. In this lesson, we're going to talk about how we can create what we call a vignette around our photos. Now, vignettes are going to create a nice little sort of emotional sort of drama for our photos, allowing our viewers to kind of focus in on just certain parts of it where everything around that part will be a little bit sort of hazy, right? So it's almost as if you're kind of like peering through another portal to see the photo, right? So it adds on a nice little emotionality to things. So if we go back over to our editing options, we go over right here to effects, you're gonna see that there's an option here called vignette, okay, excellent. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to simply go to the right and you're going to see how my vignette becomes white. If I go to the left, my vignette becomes black. And you can see, wow, that is pretty cool, right? So it's kind of like really drawing the user and the, the audience's eyes into that particular subject. All right. Now, one thing you might notice is that over here on the right hand side, this little arrow, I'm going to have extra options to really be able to manipulate my vignette. So let's just bring that in a little bit more. And now let's focus on the midpoint. You can see how that allows me to really, really focus in on things. All right, now let's focus on the roundness. You can see it's going to be round or oval, right? So depending on your subject, you can see how that's going to be a lot more round. And this is going to be a little bit more oval. Then we also have the feathering, right? So the feathering, you see how it has this nice little soft glow. If we go to the left there, it's going to get much more of a hard color. You can see there and then our hard feathering. And then you can see this is a little bit more sort of ethereal. So sometimes you might want to do like a combination of these, right? So let's just make this like super round and then super unfeathered. You see that? So maybe that's the effect you're looking for, right? Kind of nice. All right, let's just go on and make that a little bit more kind of fuzzed out and then maybe a little more ovally. Okay, very good. And now let's check out our highlights here and you can see how that just affects it a little bit. It just kind of breaks open a little bit more when you add on the highlights there. So you can see, let's do before and after. Okay, a very, very different effect. Okay, and then some of you may be doing this with like portrait shots. With a portrait shot, I think that's gonna be maybe a little bit better if you're working with a vignette going on the right-hand side, right? So if you got like a picture of a baby or a wedding shot or something like that, that's gonna be a little bit more kind of soft and you know, it kind of brings out a different kind of emotion. All right, so play around with that, but hopefully you appreciate this because this can really make a photo stand out and look a little bit more interesting. Let's now talk about the option for cropping. 
Now, cropping basically means, hey, there's certain parts of the photo that I want, certain parts of the photo I don't want. So I can crop it out to only show those parts of the photo. So let's just say, for example, I only want this part where we have my arch and we have this little statue here. So, so far we've been working with the editing tools, but now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over to here to my crop and rotate, or just tap on the letter C, and you'll see that as soon as I click on that, I get this nice little bounding box. And you'll also notice that on the right-hand side, I get a whole bunch of different options than I saw before with my editing options. So let's just take a look at some of these features for us. So you'll notice here on top is this aspect ratio, right? So the aspect ratio is basically telling me what is the sort of dimension and the ratio for the crop itself? So do you want to keep it to the original aspect ratio? Or maybe you always want it to be, you know, maybe a square or, you know, you're going to print it as like a seven by five or vice versa, or you want it to be like letterbox, any of these things you can very easily change to. So if I click on one by one, you're going to notice that's going to make it into more of a square. And then I can very easily click and drag that in. And then it's going to be a square and then I can move it around just like that. Okay, very cool. Let me come back to here. I'm gonna say as shot, very good. And that comes back to this. Click on this again. I'm gonna say original, okay, excellent. Now, you'll also notice that to the right, I'm gonna have these other options. So I can rotate the aspect ratio, right? You can see how it's gonna basically make it's gonna be landscape or portrait if you wanna do that. Or I can lock in my aspect ratio and constrain it to always be where it started from. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and just click and drag that out. And I know for sure that's always going to be the original aspect ratio. Even if I try to manipulate it, it's not gonna be able to kind of blend in one way or another. Okay, so let's come back to my original idea where I'm just gonna go ahead and click and drag in just like that. And I'm just gonna come in just like this a little bit and then maybe shave that off a little bit. Okay, and then I'm just gonna hit enter on my keyboard and just like that, I've got a new photo, right? Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Let me come back to this. And then just note that I'm back in my cropping tool. And if I wanted to, I can always bring some of that back. If I change my mind, it's just gonna be right there. I can do that. And then maybe I decide I'm gonna just bring this part in and maybe do a completely different photo altogether. I hit enter and bam, maybe I like that photo a lot more, okay? So pretty neat, right? Now, within this same feature, you're gonna see that there's other options too in terms of straightening. So you may have a photo that's a little bit crooked. Maybe you took the photo while you were on the move, your tripod was a little bit off, you're on a boat, something like that. You can very easily rotate it and straighten it, okay, within the actual tool itself. So if I just click and drag a little bit on this, you'll notice how these little grid lines pop up. It just comes up automatically, and I can just click and drag to make it fit in. Maybe you're doing it kind of on purpose, right? So if I just hit enter right now, you can see I'm gonna have a very different look, kind of creating you know, a little bit of whimsy, a little bit of emotion there, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and just undo that, all right? And come back to my crop and see what my options are here. Okay, now I'm just gonna go ahead and hit enter, come back here. And then finally, you'll see a bunch of options for rotating and flipping. So if I rotate this, I can very easily rotate one way or another to basically change my photo to just a look, look a little bit different, depending on what you're trying to do. So you can see I can rotate in this direction, or you can flip them horizontally or vertically. Okay, kind of nice, right? You can see I have a very different photo now, right? It's kind of pointing in another direction when I flip them, right? That's horizontally and I flip it vertically, not necessarily look I'm looking for, okay? But this might be a little more interesting to do. So I hit enter and I'm pretty happy with that, okay? So play around with the crappie. You see it's relatively straightforward, hopefully, but a little bit of spice to taste until you get to it, but not as complicated as some of our other color and lighting options. So just click away and see what you get, and we'll see you in the next lesson. Lightroom CC has a couple of really nice features for touching up your photos. So if you look at this image here, you'll notice I got this little streak going across here. I've got some little reflection in my glass, right? I've got a little kind of a hairline going on there, right? So I might want to fix that. So we can touch up our photos nicely and easily working with Lightroom by coming over here to our little Band-Aid right there. And when you click on that, you're going to see that I have this mode here called 
the healing mode. When I click on that drop down, you're gonna see I also have the clone mode. We're gonna separate that into two different videos, but I want you to see, number one, there's heal inside the healing brush, and there's also cloning, which we're gonna be doing in just a minute. All right, now, when we are healing, I just want you to understand kind of the technology that's happening, is that Lightroom samples out from other parts of the image to say, hey, listen, that stuff is good, but what Dave has clicked on is bad. So therefore, it's gonna sample on everything around that offending part. So you can see, like, for example, if there's a pimple, a wine stain, a lens flare, something like that, if you want to get rid of it, you simply click on it, and then Lightroom does all of the work. Now, I can also increase or decrease the size depending on the size of the, you know, offending objects there. Okay, now sometimes you might want to zoom in a little bit. So I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut of Control or Command plus plus, and I can really kind of get into it. So making sure I'm not getting too much or too little. All right, so very easily, I can adjust again the size and also the feathering of it, right? Because the feathering is going to allow it to be, is it like going to be like a very sort of hard circle around how it's going to heal this, how it's going to sample, or it's going to be a little more subtle. So let's just try it out. You can see how easy it is when I just simply click once right there, and it's gone. Now you'll notice two circles appear here. What that's showing here is that what did it actually sample? Right, it's trying to sample something that's like as close as possible. So if I move this around, notice how that little line goes into it, okay? So if it doesn't do it right, just note how you can move your little circle around no problem, right, to then sample something else. Let's try another one. It's gonna go bam, right there. And did it do it right? Yeah, sure did, but I can always just move this around to say, hey, listen, this is what I want to sample, okay? Excellent, so let's go ahead and zoom out a little bit. Let's try another one. I'm gonna go ahead and just click and drag across this time. And how did it do? Did okay, could it do better? Let me just drag this down a little bit. Okay, not too bad. Excellent, pretty good. All right, and I can go ahead and just spend a little more time here. Let me go ahead and just do one piece at a time. And you can see it looks for kind of the closest color, not too shabby. Do another one, just click once here. And then do another one there, good. Now just notice that these are all live. Right? They're actually still available if I wanted to play around with them. So I can come back to here and I can either move this one around now and sample something else if I want to, but I could also right click and then just say delete, okay? Or I can reset it back to what it was already. Okay, so just know that these things are all active and live for me, right? So in case, again, I wanted to change it or you wanted to delete it or anything else you wanna do. All right, so really, really powerful stuff. Okay, so now you can see Big difference in terms of what I had initially and now what I have currently. All right, so very good. Pause the video, practice that, and we'll see you in the next video on cloning. We've discussed the healing brush and the heal option within the healing brush tools. So let's go ahead and now discuss the clone option here. So cloning is gonna allow us to clone an object on our image and basically just make it just appear anywhere else on the canvas here. So what we need to do is first of all, go over here to clone, you can choose that. And again, here's our size and our feather and everything. Now, the way that this works, okay, can be a little counterintuitive, is what you're going to do is simply click anywhere you want your new object to be. So for this example, I wanna clone this lovely ball of cheese and I wanna have another ball of cheese. Who doesn't want another thing of cheese? So what I'm gonna do is simply just click here, again, taking a look at the size, right? It's a good size. And of course, if it's smaller or bigger, I can always change it afterwards. So I'm just gonna simply click on it. And now notice how I have that other little kind of sample of like, well, where is it going to sample? What is it gonna grab? Do I want bread? No, do I want a glass? No, right? But let me go in and just drag this over my cheese, okay? And you can see, bam, there that is. Now, I also want you to notice that you can resize your, your clone object, right? And your clone destination very easily by doing this. And of course, you can do it also by coming over to our size as well. And then remember, when we talked about the healing, we also have the option to adjust the feather, okay? So how kind of like hard are your edges going to be? All right, so if I blend this over a little bit, you can see how I can kind of create the illusion of this new cheese. So I click away, I'm gonna hit escape, 
and then bam, now you can see my object. All right, I'll come back, hit P, and now there you have it, right? Another piece of cheese and people are none the wiser. Now just keep in mind if you're expecting Photoshop levels of being able to clone, you might wanna to go to Photoshop to be able to do that because Photoshop gives you significantly more options in terms of resizing the clone, putting them into another layer altogether, um, and also rotating it and doing all kinds of good stuff. Okay, but that said, note that we do have the option to just come back here and still manipulate these if we wanted to, right? And then manipulate, you know, all these other things here. If you decide you don't want the cheese anymore, you can always come back and you can bring olives over here, right? Do whatever you want to do, okay? But just note that it is slightly limited in terms of what our options are going to be um, compared to Photoshop, all right? But still pretty cool nonetheless. So pause the video, practice that, and we'll see you in the next lesson. Now at this point, we should have a pretty good understanding of what Lightroom can do for our photos, including all of our lighting options, like for our midtones and for our highlights and for our shadows, and also for our colors, as far as our hue and luminance and our sharpness and all that good stuff. However, there's gonna be times when you wanna not just affect an entire photo or just parts of the photo as far as our midtones and shadows and all that stuff that we've seen so far, meaning, we might want to just affect certain areas of the photo. Like for example, I'm looking at this tower. I might wanna lighten this up a little bit. I'm looking at these little homes down there, or I wanna add in some color to these houses, but I don't wanna affect all of the ocean and I don't wanna affect the sky or anything like that. So how would I do that? We're now gonna draw our attention to a new area, which is gonna be this little brush area. In a little bit, we're also gonna focus on the gradient. Now this is gonna give us more control over how we can affect the individual parts of the image. So let's go ahead and click on the little brush there. And you're gonna see my brush now comes in huge, right? You can see that. So I might wanna affect the size of my brush because that's gonna say, hey, this is the area that I'm now going to affect on my canvas here. So you'll notice over here, it says size right there. And sometimes you'll notice that Underneath size is going to be a number of different options for me to work with. So if you don't see that, go ahead and click on the little drop down and that's going to appear right there. Now, my size is huge. I don't need it to be so big, but maybe later on I do. So this is a pretty big area, but do I want the entire thing lighted up, right? Totally up to you, but guess what? You can change it, so let's not worry about it. So right now, all we're doing is we're deciding what area do we want to make any changes to? For this, I just wanna add in a little bit of light here, right? The sun's coming up from over there, and then I wanna just kind of draw more attention over to this so I can actually see it a lot better. Right now it's maybe getting a little bit washed out, maybe at a certain time of the day, whatever it is, I wanna create my own reality. So again, notice here's the size, but also notice there is something called the feather. So notice how the feather Right, is that other second circle outside the middle circle. So if I bring this in a little bit, you're gonna see it's gonna make the effect a little bit more kind of like washed out, a little more subtle. So it just kind of blends in with the background. Right, totally up to you, but we can change this however we want. Okay, so I'm gonna make my size about yay big. And then I'm just gonna come over here, like right there in the middle. Okay, so you can see that I can also move this around anytime I want. Okay, that's great. Now that I have it selected, now I can actually affect it. So what can I do now? Let's go ahead and just play around with some of the tools we already know, including the exposure. And then notice how, what I'm doing. See the exposure's coming out just for that one little spot, right? Let me make it darker so you can see it. Nothing else is being affected by this, okay? Let's now grab this and move it down here. And you see how now only this area is being affected. Only this area is being affected. Okay, and then guess what? I can then make this even bigger and make that a bigger size of whatever's going to get affected. So depending on whatever you have selected right here. So let's go ahead and now do a before and after. I'm gonna do my backslash key. You can see before and after, okay? And that's pretty good. But let's just go ahead and maybe make it even better. Let's bring up my highlights a little bit more. Okay, very good. Okay, my shadows, bring those up a little bit more about my whites, okay? Again, let's do before and after. Now you can really see it, okay? And then maybe I wanna have even this part of the tower affected by it. Okay, that's even better. Love that. All right, again, before and after. Now let's see what we can do for these homes. 
So what I need to do now is create a new brush. I don't wanna just go in and click away because if I click right now, what that's gonna do, it's just gonna basically carry over the same settings that I had from here and apply them over here. Maybe that's what I wanna do on some levels, but for right now, I don't wanna do that, all right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and just create a new brush, all right? And then just simply click down here. And then those start off with their own settings, okay? Notice how these are all neutral, okay? But the size is about the same. So with this one, okay, let me just add on a little bit of saturation to these, okay? Add on a little bit of color to everything. All right, so let me go ahead and just come down to here and let's just add in a little bit more color to these, right? Let's just kind of just bring that down so you can really see the difference. Okay. So now you can see you got a little more color. Let's add on a little bit more sharpness. Add a little more clarity. Let's go ahead and take away any haze that's there. That's also gonna add on to our clarity. And now let's take a look at a before and after. You can see, pretty subtle, but let's go ahead and just make that a little bit bigger. And let's also bring down the feathering of it. Okay, so when I click on this now, you can see, all right, not too bad. Maybe that size is a little bigger than I needed to. And let's maybe go over to some of the areas that I really want to affect that actually have some more color to play with. Okay, so excellent. But I do want to play around with some of my exposure too, because that's really going to help out with my showing the colors that are currently there. Okay, let's bring down the shadows a little bit. That's going to help out. Again, let's do before and after. Okay, and that's looking much better. Okay, now let's take a look at one other example. So I'm gonna go back to my photos. I'm just gonna tap the G and I'm going to go to another image that we have here. And I'm gonna play around with these little lanterns and I'm gonna show you how we can now get a nice little effect on just the lights here. So you'll notice how these guys have these individual little brushes here, okay? So you can see, bam, there that is, right? I'm gonna move away, wow, pretty cool. So that's what I've done here. Now, I'm gonna start from scratch so you can see exactly what's done and then how we can actually do it on our own. So if you right click on this, I can actually delete these, okay? I'm gonna right click and just say delete, all right? And I'm just gonna go ahead and do one at a time. Now, my brush size can also be affected by using a keyboard shortcut of the left bracket key or the right bracket key on your keyboard, All right? So I don't need it to be quite as big as the last time I used it. Okay, so I'm just gonna go in and click anywhere inside here. Bam, I have that. And now let's bring up the exposure and you can see, whoa, look at that. I just turned on the light. Pretty cool, okay? And you can see that is being carried over to here. All right, but now I don't wanna to have to do that again. That lighting is perfect. So what I'm gonna do this time is simply right click on it and choose duplicate and that lands right on top of it. And now I have two and now that's gonna go here. But this time I'm gonna break my brush to go a little smaller because it doesn't need to be so big. Okay, that's great because it's a smaller lamp altogether. But then maybe I also wanna bring down my feathering a tiny bit as well. Okay, very good. So let's look at a before and after, very nice. And let's duplicate this one. And let's bring this one over here. And that definitely needs to be much smaller. So let's bring that smaller. Okay, and then, okay, let's do it before and after so we can really see. Very nice. Love that, okay? And again, notice how nothing else was affected, only these areas that I have now put these little brushes on, okay? So you wanna play around with this, experiment with your own photos, but you should see this is really all about control, right? Because sometimes we have all these things we wanna do in terms of our lighting and our color and our sharpness and everything, but it's accidentally or inadvertently affecting other parts of our image. So this is gonna be the answer to that. In a second, we're gonna be taking a look at the gradient option for this, 
which is going to be a slightly different way of applying the same thing, but again, having the same amount of control that we don't have using our original tools that we started with. So go ahead and pause the video, practice this, and we'll see you in the next lesson. In the last lesson, we focused on how we can have some control over which elements on our photo are effective, right? So we use the brush tool to do that. So we were able to just click, click, click and say, hey, listen, only those parts are going to have more color. Only those parts are going to have more exposure, etc. But sometimes you might want to have objects that are not going to necessarily be affected by a round objects, or you might want to just have it be like a linear object, right? Just something that's kind of going across like a sky or an ocean, or even maybe these houses, something like that, okay? Or maybe even this green area right there, okay? So what we're going to do is we're now gonna make this sky bluer, okay? So pretty easy to do. So let's just go ahead now and go over here to our gradient option. So I click on that, and you're gonna see this comes up, and we are in the linear gradient option tool. And you'll see, again, here is the create and edit gradient instead of the brush option. Pretty neat, pretty cool. All right, and then again, all the same options we see as far as making any kind of effect and modification to our image. So my goal here is to make my sky bluer. Right now, it's okay, but you know what? I know it was a lot bluer, but also I wanna add in a little bit of effect. So very simply, I'm just gonna click and drag and what I'm doing now is I'm creating my gradient of how far and wide my color or my lighting or whatever I'm going to do is going to go. You'll also notice that I still have my finger on the mouse and I'm just clicking and dragging and rotating to kind of go in line with the sky, right? So maybe it's ultimately just going to be like this, right? So totally up to you, right? So I'm just going to let go right now. And what I'm going to do next is I'm going to apply the effect that I want, okay? So it's gonna affect this whole area, but guess what? It's also gonna affect this area, this area, this area. Okay, like, hmm, okay. So what can we do to affect that, right? So we'll, we'll deal with that in just a second. So let's just very simply bring up a little bit of saturation here. And you can see very clearly, very quickly, right? The blue becomes a little bluer. Let's go ahead now and resize this because I'd maybe like to see a little more blue down below. So if I move my mouse to the edge here, I can actually extend this out. And if I come to the center, I can rotate this, right? Kind of go slowly, it's a little slippery, okay? And there you go, good. And I can rotate that, good. And rotate it this way, whatever you wanna do, whatever kind of look you're looking for, okay? That can be a little bit slippery, so just be careful with that. Hopefully you're using a mouse. All right, but now after I've seen I've done this, it's like, okay, that's okay, but it's maybe a little bit too much. So I could bring down the saturation a tiny bit more. And now let's see a before and after. Cool, there's my before, there's my after. Very nice, right? It's very subtle. All right, but guess what? I can also move this over here if I want to, right? So like that sky is a little bit too dark over there. I can move this up a little bit. Okay, great. So you've got lots and lots of great options there, okay? So you don't have to be committed just to one thing versus the other. Now, one thing I want you to notice is when you move your mouse over the little center point, you get this kind of like red haze, all right? This is basically telling me what is being affected by the um, different colors or the different um, effects that I've applied. So what areas of my image are actually being affected by this? So I'll notice it's like, oh, wow, yeah, there's, there's a lot of stuff here that I don't want to actually have the saturation on, okay? So that's actually being affected in a way that I don't actually want. I only really want the sky to be affected, okay? So you can see as I do this, other things are getting affected and it really doesn't look as natural, it doesn't look as realistic as the way I want it to. So guess what I can do? I can erase certain parts of whatever is affected here, okay? So you're gonna see some other elements here. Again, if you move your mouse over it, you can see there's like the kind of pink and red all over it. So guess what? Let's come over to here and let's just start erasing some of these things here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and just bring out a little bit more of the natural state of the mountains. And sometimes you may wanna zoom in here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and zoom in a little bit in just a second. Let's go, go ahead and come back to my linear gradient and I'm gonna zoom in just by just doing my control plus plus or command plus plus if you're on a Mac. Okay, very good. So now I'm zoomed in. And then let's now really make sure we're not getting so close to the edges. 
because we still want the sky to be nice and clean and blue. You can see I think I had some stuff over here, but let's just double check and you can see, ah, okay, pretty cool. So let's just now still get into there. Now, you may not be getting as much as you think, mostly because of the feather, okay? So you can see you can feather more or less, right? So I'm gonna feather less so I can really kind of get to the edges of these as far as me deleting any of that gradient that's on there. Okay, let's come back to here and you can see I'm doing a pretty good job there. Okay, so let's just go ahead and just get in there, get in there, get in there. Okay, one more. All right, now let's just go ahead and zoom back out. I come back to my main tool, back out, back out. And let's do before and after. Okay, and nothing else is really affected. But guess what? If I still feel this is too blue or whatever, I can always come over to here, click on this, and then bring down that saturation a tiny bit. Maybe I'm gonna bring up my contrast a little bit, right? Or down, whatever you wanna do. I bring up my exposure or down a little bit. So whatever I do now, this particular point is what gets affected, right? That's what's so cool about this, right? Just only one area is now getting affected, okay? So you'll really wanna play around with you know, all these options. Now, living in this same department here, right next to our create and edit gradient option is gonna be a brush again, not to be confused with this brush. This is gonna allow us to actually have a little bit more sort of control over what we're gonna apply. That's gonna be much more like a brush the way that we think we wanna brush, okay? So we have all of our settings here for saturation and let's just now apply it to this area right here. So notice I'm actually adding on a little bit more color to these, right? Let me just go ahead and bring it to my house there. You can see a little bit of red coming through, really nice, okay? How about some of these right there? Okay, very good. Okay, maybe I do want it on some of this right there. Okay, great. Let's go ahead and look at our before and after and we can see how our sky comes up, our ocean comes up and notice I missed a little spot there. So let's come back to my brush and as you can see, great, there it is, perfect. Let's just go and maybe a little bit more. Let's just see what that's gonna do, okay? Perfect, wow, love that. Okay, so a few things just kind of hiding in plain sight. So we wanna make sure that we explore all these where we have you know, our regular gradient and we also have the brush right here that's living inside of the linear gradient brush tool. Okay, so just keep that in mind so we have a little bit more control over how we're gonna affect our content. And I love that. That really looks much, much better, a little more vibrancy. Okay, so very good. Practice all of this, have fun with it. Love to see what you create. Let's hear from you in the comments and uh, we'll see you in the next video. The next thing we are going to discuss is the radial gradient tool. Now we've already discussed the linear gradient, which is basically gonna create a gradient that's just gonna be in a line. And that line can be, of course, going straight across or diagonal, or we can rotate it. Now, working with the radial gradient, that means it's gonna be a gradient that's gonna be a circle. It's going to be coming in from the middle and going out in a circular sort of convex or concentric fashion. So let's take a look at that. I'm just gonna go ahead and click on it once to add to that. And then you're gonna see that this pops up with a bunch of different options that we've already seen before. And now what I'm gonna do is just simply click anywhere in here to say, okay, well, this is gonna be the beginning of my radial gradient to be able to just say, hey, listen, we're only gonna focus on this particular area to apply these particular effects. Now this of course is not big enough. I wanna cover this entire set of grapes and let's now make this a little bit bigger. Okay, maybe a little bit taller. Okay, great, a little bit wider. Okay, excellent. Now, you will notice like we saw in our other video that we do have other options here to then apply a brush to it to be a little more manual and also to erase this. So you'll see that I this is a little bit bigger than it needs to be, but maybe it's gonna be okay. Now, what do I want to affect here? I want to now just add on a little bit of texture, but I don't really want anything else, like including these fingers or anything else around there. I just really only want to focus on my grapes here. So that's why I've selected this. So I'm just gonna go ahead and just bring up my texture a little bit. 
And now let's just do before and after so we can see that's pretty nice. So it adds in a little more depth of field than I would have had otherwise. All right, now is it really affecting anything behind it? That's adding on some texture there as well, I can see it. So do I want that? Maybe, yes, maybe no. All right, so let's just go ahead and bring that back. And let's now just use our eraser so we can see that we can then take that away if we don't want that to be part of the gradient that I've chosen here to then have that textured effect, okay, of my clarity. All right, so let's come back over to here, move my mouse over, you can see now what's getting affected, that's now within that red. And if I wanna be a little bit closer, I can go ahead and do that. All right, so this can really be anything you want. All right, so just keep that in mind. Now, if I wanted to change the color of these grapes, I can very easily do that, changing the hue. Maybe I wanna bring up the saturation a little bit and just notice how that just changes only what has been selected, okay? So maybe I'll just go up a tiny bit. That's pretty nice, they look nice and juicy. So I've just created the effect that I want to be able to see. All right, so pretty nice. Now, if I want to get rid of this, let's just go ahead and maybe say, listen, I don't want this stem to be part of it. Good, I can just kind of bring that down a little bit, not having the saturation and not also having the texture. Let's bring this up a little bit more. Okay, great, fantastic. So you can see how there is some similarity and some crossover between all of these. It's just a question of what are you selecting in the process and how you're selecting it, and also how you're removing some of that selection. All right, so pause the video, practice that, and we'll see you in the next lesson. Now that we've got our photos in the place that we want them in terms of our lighting and color, we've also got them in albums, we got them organized. Let's see how we can share these photos. And you can share these photos and export them in a number of different ways. If you're gonna export it, you can export it in a number of different formats, different sizes, you can rename them. And you can also share them with people so you can have contributors. And you can also make websites out of them so you can actually have your own gallery sponsored by Adobe. So let's just take a look at some of these options. So I'm just gonna go and open up this photo and I'm gonna take a look at this little icon right up there. And you can see when I click on that, it's gonna give me a number of different options for sharing or exporting. And you can see here, I've got custom settings, JPEG, large and small. I wanna share it as just my original size, okay? And also notice it's gonna keep track of some of my previous settings as well. And in a second, we're gonna go ahead and just take a look at ways that you can just get a link and you can share it with people. So in case you have large images and large albums, you might wanna share a link rather than sharing individual files. Okay, so pretty nice to be able to do that. So let's go over here to our custom settings first of all, so we can see something that's maybe not quite as obvious. And you'll see over here on the right-hand side, we've got a lot, a lot of options to now customize and go a little bit deeper. So you can save this as a JPEG, a TIFF, or you can see here, you can save it as a raw file as well, or you can also save it as whatever the originals are plus the settings that you have on here. All right, now you can also change the dimensions, small, full size or custom. If I go over here to custom, you'll see I'm able to now change how many of the resolution of it, right? The pixels you want. And also you can change it to inches and centimeters. You can do all kinds of great things. And maybe you want to bring this down a little bit and compress it so it's not gonna be quite so big. So you can bring that down to a different percentage of the quality levels. And maybe you wanna put in a bookmark. So maybe you have a bookmark all ready to go. You can add that in if you like. All right, so I'm not gonna do that right now, but just notice I can put it in my name. You can also put in a graphic if you want to, and you can just upload it and then bam, there you go. You're gonna have a watermark in there. That's great for photographers if you wanna protect your work. All right, so let me just come right back to here. Let me cancel this, come back over here. And then the question is also, well, when you're saving this, what do you want to save with this? So you're gonna have a number of different bits of metadata on there. So if you're shaving this, that's going to have like your name on there. It's going to have, you know, all your camera information, your f-stop and your focal, you know, information, all that good stuff. You might want to have that there, or you're just going to override that and say just the copyright, right? So you can just have that there. All right now, in terms of the file naming, you're going to see my camera named it a certain thing here. You can zoom in a little bit, okay? But I don't want to name it that, so I'm going to go ahead and click on the little drop down. I'm going to say custom name. And then I can give that a name. So I'm going to say Amalfi 2018. Okay, that's great. 
have that. That's awesome. So when I finally customize that, when I finally export that and save it, it's going to be saved with that name. Okay. So I can find it later on. Okay. Then you also have some other options in terms of if you're planning to print this, what's going to be the best sort of format for you. If it's going to be matte paper, glossy paper. Okay. And then some of these other things, you might know what is the right thing to do for, or if you are, what type of format you want to save it in, in terms of the color profile, uh, as far as how you might be printing it or showing it on the web. So you'll know what the right options are here. Okay. Now I'm ready to save this. I'm going to click on export. And now this is going to come up and I'm going to select this folder. That's great. And now that has been saved. And now that I have it exported, let's see how we can send this. So this is basically us exporting our images as just regular JPEGs, and we want to send it as just a regular attachment. So if we go back to an email, I'm going to go over here and just say attach file. I'm going to say browse this PC. And then here I am inside of that folder where it saved it. Okay, inside of the Lightroom save photos, it created that folder for me. Wonderful. And there it is named what I named it, Amalfi 2018. Very cool. Now it comes in as an attachment and then I can send this to whomever I want. Okay, so bam, there you go. Okay, and then here is Amalfi. Okay, and then I just say, enjoy. Wonderful. And that's gonna go ahead and go out there and love it. Very cool. Okay, excellent. So that is how we export an image from within Lightroom and then we find the file on our computer and then we send it as an email, all right? In the next lesson, we're gonna learn how we can actually create web links to be able to create uh, different permission levels for people to be able to share and contribute and make edits to the photo. So go ahead and practice this up and we'll see you in the next lesson. In the last exercise, we talked about exporting our images as JPEGs or different file formats and then also sending them as basics basic attachments like we normally would. But now let's talk about sharing things as links. So if I wanted to share this as a link, I can very easily just right click and you'll notice here is get a link and it's gonna pop up and you're gonna see, it's gonna give me a link to share. You can see very easily I can now share this, okay? And also notice I can share it on various social media platforms, very cool. Now you'll also notice that there is this link access. So anybody who has this link can view it or it actually has to just be on invite only. So totally up to you. Now in this part here, I can actually send an email directly to people if I wanted to, right? But notice that there are these three other options here. If you move your mouse over, you'll see that whoever receives this can only view it. Whoever receives it, and I choose this option, can also view it and contribute with their own photos. Or if I choose this option, not only can they contribute, but they can also edit the photos and do whatever kind of enhancements they want to, okay? So I have a few options now here. I could now highlight all this and then just copy and paste it into an email, or I can go ahead and just send this off to somebody, whoever wants to receive that, very good. And I'm gonna give this person the ability to not only edit, but also contribute. So very simply just click on invite. Very cool, and then bam, they're gonna receive that. Right? They're going to receive that photo. But let's say I wanted to share, let's say, for example, this Italy food picks entire folder. Okay, so you can see, let me come back to you. You can see there's lots of stuff here. Look at this Italy all. There's even more stuff here. Now, if I wanted to share these, again, it's as easy as a right click. So I'm going to right click on my food picks, and you can see here is my share and invite. And again, very similar options here. All right, so let me go ahead and just now put in another and let's put that in there okay very cool do the same thing invite all right i'm going to click done wonderful now what's so cool about this is that not only the person who will be receiving this can do all those things will be able to receive one email that has 67 photos or nine photos in it whatever it is and they can view it, they can edit it, whatever kind of permission levels I put in there. But also you'll notice that there is another tab here. It says albums and also shared. So when I click on that, you're gonna see, I actually have two albums here that I have shared. You can see, bam, there's my Italy food pics. And then there's also individual photos that I've shared as well, keeping track of it for me. Okay, so really nice you can see that there, that's great. 
Now, one thing you might want to notice to see, well, who am I actually sharing this with? Because this is telling me that this, in fact, is being shared. But you might forget, who did you share this with? If you go way over here in the upper, upper right, you can see there's this little kind of person icon with a little plus sign. If you click on that, that's going to allow you to, again, share. But it's also showing you who you're actually sharing with and the different permission levels that you have on this, which you can change. And you can also remove them if you want to. And you can also stop the sharing. All right. So pretty neat. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of that. Come back to all my photos. Very good. And I want you to practice that. All right. In a little bit, we'll talk about how you can save your gallery. And now let's see how we can create a little website or gallery for our photos. Because I want to be able to share these and I want to actually be able to present them in such a way. So if I go back over to here, I right click and I say share and invite. You'll see that there is the second tab here next to invite called customize. And you're going to see I have a number of different options I can work with here. All right, so do I want to show the title? Maybe you want to change the title name. You can absolutely do that. I'm just going to go ahead and just say Italy 2018. All right, do I want to show the author? Yes or no. Let me go ahead and turn that off. And then you also have these little theme options, okay, and also for your appearance. So I want to click on that drop down. How do you want this to be showing? Okay, so photo grid, which is how it is right now. You can see there is column. And then also there is one up. So you'll want to experiment to see which ones you like. I'm going to keep mine at photo grid. And then you also have your appearance, dark or light. That's basically going to be how the background is. So again, up to you, however you want to do that. Now, you'll also see that there's the settings option. Mm -hmm. And these settings are going to allow you to have a little more control over how people are going to interact, what information they have with your content, Okay, and all kinds of other good stuff here. So do you want people to be able to download and export your photos? So if you're trying to protect your images, you don't want anybody messing with it, keep that off. Okay, do you want the metadata on there? Totally up to you. Do you want to show the location? Up to you. Maybe I want to do that when people are looking at it so they know exactly where it is. Okay, do you want to have comments in there? No, I do not. All right, and you can see also, Editors will always have access to the metadata and location and the ability to export the photos. So I'm an editor, so I'm always going to be able to have that once I'm logged in, but other people will not have that. Okay, so they're just kind of letting you know in case you do see it there, don't freak out. It's just because you're the editor and you're going to be able to see the information, but others will not. All right, so let me come back here and now finally choose customize on the web and it's going to pop right up now to my images, and bam, there it is, Italy 2008. You'll notice that I do have the option to then change my theme, in case you're curious, or you can see here's another one right there, one up, and then you can see, all right, maybe that's how I wanna show it. Let's take a look at the appearance. Okay, there's my white versus my black. I prefer the black, and I do prefer this original photo grid. Okay, love that, isn't that cool? So lots and lots of options there for you to be able to now share with people. Right, so really, really cool. Practice all this stuff here. You'll see how extraordinary this is to be able to share your photos in such a great way without having to actually host a website or anything like that. Okay, so let me come back to Lightroom, click on done, and we are good to go. And I've shared that with the masses. People are super happy, and I look forward to hearing from them and sharing all my wondrous adventures with the world, and I hope you do too. Okay, so go ahead and pause the video, practice this stuff up, lots of good stuff. Hopefully you have a lot of photos to work with, and uh, we'll see you soon. Thank you for watching everyone, and congratulations. This concludes our tutorial on Lightroom CC. Wasn't that a blast? Lightroom CC is a pretty amazing, user-friendly, and super powerful tool for editing, enhancing, and organizing your images. So let's review what we covered, shall we? We started with a basic overview of the interface, learned some important keyboard shortcuts, we explored all the very useful tools for organizing, finding, and rating our images, and of course we learned how to color and light correct our images, touch up our photos with the healing tools, and got even more advanced with the brush and gradient tools. We then learned how we can export and share our photos via email and the web. Hope you enjoyed the class, learned a lot, and will continue your pursuits of creativity moving forward. 
Thank you again and hope to see you in the next class. Thanks for watching. Don't forget we also offer live classes in office applications, professional development, and private training. Visit LearnIt.com for more details. Please remember to like and subscribe and let us know your thoughts in the comments. Thank you for choosing LearnIt.